Ladies and gentlemen, welcome did. back to What the Duck, the quarterly podcast from Moonduck Studios. This is episode <laughs> number 49. It's December 13th. We're two weeks uh, away from Christmas. You last heard from woo! us around TI. So we've got a lot to a lot to get through. Uh, it's a three man podcast today. Zayori, Sir Action Slacks, and Purge Gamers back again. How you feeling here, boys? It's good. It's it's like we're basically just guests on the Zayori podcast right now. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah I fun. like it. <laughs> the I'm longest running uh, Dota Two podcast. Fuck, we say things, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, they're uh, they're slaying too- it. I guess they're too busy to join us on what the duck now. Uh, I guess in all oh. seriousness. <laughs> A lot of our duckers are in transit to uh, Singapore right now for the next big Dota tournament. Uh, Trent and Mally are the two off the top of my head that I know will be there. Um, yeah. That explains why everybody in Twitch yesterday was writing, are you going to Singapore, Purge? And I was like, what? What, what the, the hell's a Singapore? Yeah, I could, this event ran off my radar. I completely forgot it was happening. No offense to our boys over there setting up that tournament. But is it a major or is it's just a third party event? No, it's like an ESL event, I think. It's a standalone. Oh. Uh, but I think mm. it's actually co run by PGL. It's one of these yeah. kind of like, you know, the KL major. It's PGL and they're working with somebody else. Um, is it One Esports? And I'm pretty sure that One is a big fighting brand in Asia. It's like the, the Asian UFC. Uh, so One oh. Esports is their new esports division. But if you Google it, it's the same One logo. Um, and you can find their website, and there's a ton of, you know, obviously I don't really follow UFC and stuff, but this, this piques you my, my curiosity because uh, <laughs> it, let's you want to want to start. Some, I don't know if this is true or not. I probably shouldn't say. It. Go ahead. <laughs> when I met with Oscar Fang a couple times, the guy that ran GSC, oh, he kept telling shit, me that one go. of his partners was like the uh, the uh, UFC equivalent in Southeast Asia. I have no idea if it's the same organization. Oh. Or not, but... <laughs> um, well, that's a real shit slinging right there with no backup. First time in the hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I I hope it's I hope it's the them. same. I hope no one maybe gets paid. Maybe there's two UFCs. No, <laughs> but, but if 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 Oscar is involved, then who knows? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. That then, was yeah, like, no that was like paid. That, he if told I... me that like at TI five or something, like like two or three years before uh, he did events. So he probably doesn't even he probably didn't even have I that mean, partner. A lot of times when these big brands that aren't in esports and want to break in, they just contact anybody that will talk to them and kind of get a feel of where the industry's at <laughs> and what to do. So it could very well be that Oscar did have a meeting with someone at one point and they went, Yeah, yeah. this guy's fucking crazy. And that's why they didn't or, sponsor any of the GESC events. Or, or they're like, We want to get into esports. It's obviously going to fit well with our market, and here's a guy that wants to do it in our region. Of That's course, true. they would talk business with yeah. them, so it's probably nothing weird. But just all right. bring what, my memory. Me, I got pulled up. When does it start? It's actually really soon, right? Isn't it just a couple days away? And isn't it also really long? Am I talking out of my ass here? Isn't this event like ten days or something? We don't talk out of our ass on this podcast, I agree. Yeah, only <laughs> educated. Let's non opinions, facts. We're facts men. Animals drinking eggnog right now. Who? I am not drinking eggnog. I um, let's see here. So 17, 18, 19, 21. It's only five days. All right, I lied. My bad. More misinformation. <laughs> Fake news. It's a five day, five hundred thousand dollar tournament, though. Yo, five hundred k. That's crazy. That's a lot of cheddar. Yeah, I gotta admit, I like third party tournaments. Uh, I think that uh, out of the last DPC ESL are ones who came at a ahead. I think everyone that had to do a uh, DPC event last year got kind of fucked. So I'm excited to see yeah. new third party tournaments coming out. What do you mean by <laughs> kind of fucked? Do you want to elaborate on that? Or is has that... anybody not been fucked by DPC in the last two years? I mean, no. And that's why I'm saying like third party tournaments like ESL that are just like, we're going to throw big ass Dota tournaments, but we're not going to go through Valve's rules. We're going to take care of it ourselves. They seem to be pretty successful. I think that it yeah. was the smart way to go. And it's uh, it's good to see other people getting into that space because I don't know. Uh, I mean, the DPC schedule right now, they even tell you how to do like your group stages and shit. It's kind of crazy. Um, well, yeah. you, I mean, you it, for, the, for the sake of like making sure that everything's fair and organized and like consistent, you do have to put some control on like that. Sure. Um, I, I do. I, I, I've still been I have been a fan of ESL's businesses and, and um, events for the last like two years. Well, granted, they're the majority of the events that I'm working, but like they their stage is consistently amazing. Um, they have. Everything's just like really well organized. They always put us up in like the super, the fanciest hotels. They have really nice like uh, player areas and stuff. Like consistently, they've been doing it right. And the the fact that, and the crazy thing is that all they've had to do to, like normally teams that aren't playing DPC, they just don't want to play in your event. 
um, typically. Um, but what what ESL does is they basically have their events in nice places like you know uh, European countries with uh, in nice cities in the center, and then they just have these good accommodations, and then teams just want to play in it. It's pretty sick, actually. It like right. convinces them to be like, oh, this is a vacation tournament or like a a not pain in the ass tournament, you know. So it's right. it's a cool business model. I gotta work for it but uh yeah i think that uh this is gonna be a fun event though pgl always puts on good stuff uh they've been uh kind of took a step back from dota last season uh didn't do too much and it feels good that they're organizing something yet again there's a couple of new exciting things coming out from this one one of my most interested ones is kyle is hired with mally to do content that's, that's right. gonna be exciting it's yes. this tournament i, I, saw this the, I remember tournament. seeing the announcement uh We'll see how that goes. Kyle is a, <laughs> Kyle is a guy that has a lot of ideas. Like when, right. when, when I've spent time with him recently, I was like, man, he's just like his ideas are floating. If you read that like year end blog or like season end blog that he wrote around TI, it was like the same thing, dude. The ideas just mm -hmm. like blast out of his head in random directions. And um, if he can make them solid, if he can find a couple and make uh, content gems out of it, or if Mally can polish them, I think it, it could, he could be really good. Not to mention he's also a high level player and he has some history with uh, some of the teams as well so he could definitely exactly make some cool ideas yeah. he's he's got the confidence i think that's the huge thing about the fluff content role and interacting with players is you have to have the confidence to ask them the weird questions and put yourself out there to try to get the reactions for the content piece and that is where i think kyle is almost unmatched he's a very confident man and that translates yes. well in the talent space even when we ask him not to do stuff and say this is a bad idea he still does it with full <laughs> confidence that it's a good idea even after the audience says they didn't like it, he's still like, it was great. So Trust <laughs> so me, guys. Good. Guys, I know 10 years from now, they'll watch this little laugh. But no, I, I, uh, I think he's, uh, it's going to be really good. I'm actually super interested to see how Kyle and Mousetrix do on interviews. Uh, I don't want to be this guy because typically it's my job, but interviews in Dota are pretty much garbage. <laughs> no offense to yeah. everyone in well the scene. Can but... <laughs> you talk about what that's like? Because as when I did interviews at TI2, for example, I was yeah. excited because I was like, man, I'm, I'm not a pro level player, but I have pretty high game level knowledge. I can ask the interesting Dota strategy questions that a regular interviewer just wouldn't know or feel comfortable asking. But yeah. I feel like I've talked to other interviewers since then in the last like, you know, almost uh, seven years or whatever. And a lot of times they're like, you just shouldn't really ask them too many technical questions because they have so much emotion right now from their win or their loss or whatever. That that's more relevant. Is that is that generally what you found as an interviewer? It's like uh, a good interviewer has to, you know, you can prep as many questions as you want. You can be super interested in certain things, but you have to read the uh the subject right and that's what's so hard is when a player comes out and they have a lot of energy that's what you talk about and you talk about like that win and all that excitement even though you're prepped to talk about smart shit and if a player is really boring and you're asking you're really like hey so in game one you did this and the, your drafter did this but this happened what happened and then they give you a oh you know we really tried then you just have to throw everything else out the window and try to build something else there so um that's really tough it's it's hard to play off people you have to have like that natural way to do that in real life so uh, i think kyle's great at that a he's just gets in good conversations and b i feel like especially in roles like an analyst uh if you were an ex-pro player you're you know yeah well, how do you say this like your, your level of respect from the community is higher though like oh this guy's actually knows what he's talking about even if you don't but uh i think players are like that too i'm interested to see what happens when an ex-pro player is interviewing players i think they'll actually give them answers and shit so yeah. i'm really hyped to see that really you, for you real think it's getting better though slacks i feel like a lot of these players like on tier one teams and tier 1.5 teams now have been to so many events where they have to do media day if you've been to a ti you've probably gotten close to an interview are players getting better at giving better answers? Or you think we're just flatlined? We're at the same, same level just, of one-word answers that we're going to be forever. No, uh, the smart players are uh, the players that understand <laughs> that. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Uh, um, there's smart players and there's dumb players. There's players that recognize brand value and mm -hmm. recognize that maybe I might be really good right now, but when the patch changes, I might not be good. But it's my personality and my following that will get me to a tier one team until I can get good again. And that's where you see guys like, I love him. Miracle's amazing as a player, but literally puts no effort into like 
any kind of like social or interviews or YouTube videos and stuff. That's true. And one day that's going to hurt him. If the patch ever falls and he goes down in skill level, and there's no reason to pick him up. But you see somebody like Puppy, he's sucked for like four years. (laughs) He's still like top of the world. I mean, picking fucking Dazzle every game. Come on, Puppy. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I love Puppy. Uh, I was going to say, Puppy is pretty good at being media forward. Like he does brain and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I think Kuro is another good example. Basically, everybody, almost everybody on former Liquid was just like awful with branding. They just don't care, which is fine because they make enough money that they like if they don't want to push their push their time in that way, it's okay. But if they could make a lot more money, probably by being a little bit more brand focused. But Hold on, somebody's brought, in my room. Puppy. No, I'm just kidding. Go when you brought up that Miracle. A it's a really good point that <laughs> that Miracle is like. He's easily like top three most round players for like, I don't know, almost five years now or something, wherever since ever he's come into the scene. And I I'm not even sure what his voice sounds like. I'm not confident. <laughs> I I've heard him speak before, I know, but like, isn't that insane to think that he's like he's yeah. he's like Sumail level talent. Sumail has a bigger brand presence Yo. without a doubt because he's outgoing and Miracle is, is just silent. Sumail's kinda in the same uh, not outgoing, same but boat for me. He's he's willing to tweet. Yes, but Sumail's like in almost the same category as he's starting to get better now. But as you saw him get dropped, like he's not on EG anymore. Mm-hmm. What team is he on? If he took like care of his brand and made sure to like develop that following when he was in the spotlight, you bet your ass people would pay anything to have him on their team. But what I don't do you know do, man? See, now where's Arteezy really on this spectrum of all these player names you're bringing out there? That is the perfect example. <laughs> Arteezy is perfect. He streams. He makes content. He does any time I'm at an event and I want to make content, Arteezy will say yes because he wants the fans to know. And I'm sorry, but Arteezy, his entire career, he never won TI, but people still treat him like a TI champion. People still care. And he has so much clout in the community because he cares about that kind of shit. So and that's what I'm saying. He's also players, very high smart skilled. players. You, you have to say that. He is very high yeah, skilled. Yeah, of course. Of course. Probably, They're all he's... high skilled. But I don't know. I, I mean, like, Arteezy is, like, what, best? He's, like, without a doubt, he's never, ever since he, like, made in the pro scene, he's easily been, like, what, top five, top ten carries in the world. And he's never left that, is yeah. what I'm trying to say. So it's, like, it's not sure. just that he's, he's, that he's, he's uh, that he does things. It's, he's... it's also that he's still, he's always been very good and he innovates yeah. pretty consistently. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But... Anyway, so I, uh, let, let's shift gears here, guys, since we're talking sure. about branding. How, two big rebrands that uh, we can break down here. <laughs> evil Geniuses. Uh, first up, now going true evil with this new logo. Oh. And also LGD. They've taken this Whoa. new... Huh? Moonduck has never talked about Team Nigma as well, by the way. You're right. Yeah, I, was gonna say, I thought Tra- that's who you were going to say. Trent and I, I did. Two... <laughs> and, uh, well, that's... How did that go? Know, <laughs> so we... Uh, <laughs> We got the audience prepped for it. If you guys want to dive into Team Nigma, we can also talk about that. So let's throw I'd, all I'd three. Uh, it, it really has felt like a year of rebranding, though. A lot of these, really, like EG had that same brand for ever since I can remember, like the StarCraft days. It was so iconic uh, in terms of the esports landscape. And now they've got this new logo that I, I don't know if I just saw it for the first time. I would hate it as much as I've seen people react to it. I think it's that people felt attached to the old one, and this doesn't feel really much like an upgrade it just feels different and that's not super exciting i personally think it's fine i thought that it was a bit of an overreaction myself do we all have the same mic i'm pretty sure we do we do okay. hey sm7b confirm. baby there yeah is, baby the everyone recommends anyways um i i didn't think their rebrand looks that bad i mean their their previous brand is iconic or whatever but like even including eg in a rebrand mistake conversation with nigma is like it's not even the same universe <laughs> <What>? discussions <laughs> So, all right, real talk. I I I don't think it's as big of a deal as they're drawing out though, but I love esports brands with sports like logos. I mean, they look better on banners, they look better as like pins, just in general marketing. Their names a fucking sentence now. I mean, it, where do you put that on a shirt? You know, it no offense what, to my bro, boy Greg, but it looks about? like chaos now, you know? Like team chaos it's, is chaos. Bro, did you see their geniuses. logo on their Twitter right now? It is it fits in a square. I'm they looking right on purpose. Now. Hold on. It's it's a, it's about the proportions and it being readable basically. It's just right? about so, the big V, right? Is that what, do you what mean it's about the big V? It says evil and then under under it is geniuses. And all you have to do is read the word evil and you're gonna know what that is. Because what other team puts the word evil in their in their team name? Very, very right. few teams anywhere. Like even in pro sports, does anybody 
I mean, obviously, pro sports is more watered down or whatever, but like, not a lot of organizations are like, yes, I would like to describe my organization as evil. And nobody's ever <laughs> going to touch that. So, like, the fact that the evil is so big makes it easily readable. You know what it is because they have really good branding power. And the fact that it's a square means that you can fit it anywhere. And the evil takes up all the space. Therefore, it's easy to see what it is. And the V is a little, it's going to be iconic now, too. You can see How the is the V, v going to be iconic? Be it's well, a V. Because it's different. It has a little it's point that, it's on a, the, It's two look. lines. <laughs> so I actually thought they were trying to make evil-looking eyebrows with the dead space on the N and the U. You know, like how cartoons and South Park, they get mad and their eyebrows get all jagged. I thought that's why the V was so exaggerated, to make eyebrows. Am I crazy? Does anyone else see the eyebrows? I don't see the eyebrows. No, you idiot. <laughs> I'm at the bottom of the V? Yeah, bottom the of the V, that smaller. negative space where it cuts Didn't into the N and the top of the U. Doesn't it look kind of like those I crooked eyebrows mean, if somebody's not, really angry? That's not no, like, Andrew. Oh. No, no, I don't know. I don't, I don't know much about graphic design, but I feel like my statement is correct. It has to be in the square. The evil is the biggest, the word, and they're not just going to write the letters out. That looks garbage. So they put a little bit of stylization on it. They could slap a V somewhere, and that V is going to look, and by iconic, I mean like you're not going to, like once you get used to this V, you're going to start seeing, you're going to see the V somewhere by itself, and you're going to know that, oh, that's an evil genius's V, you know? Like there's there's good things that they do with this, in my opinion. I don't think it's bad. I disagree with you uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, having a circular kind of logo gives you a lot of options and stuff. Easy to put on shirts. Easy to put on, like, you know, the side of the arm the and shit. the square is so non-functional in compared to a circle. It's fucking stupid. It's just their name written out. It, this is such Zoomer bullshit. It looks like every other logo that exists in marketing right I, now. I am sure it's a that literal they did not font hire of Apex a Legends, dude. graphic artist. What, what is the average age of graphic artists? Because I have a feeling they are not. They're fucking well, Zoomies. Zoomer, I'm sorry. I thought you said Boomer, my bad. No, some fucking nineteen-year-old kid is like, I'm gonna make the Apex Legends logo for evil geniuses. They'll never figure it out. Did you see and the comparisons of there. it next to the Epic logo? It's no. the same thing. Every marketing agency does this exact same thing. It's just a square of letters, you know. What company but, did you say, Andrew? Uh, I'm gonna see if I can find an example of it. I, I saw it on Twitter earlier, and it does. It's not. I don't think they like tried to copy it or something. I'm more trying to make point Slax's point that it's it's just very fitting with quote contemporary design, and I it it doesn't really stand out to me as good or bad. It's just kind of a logo. I don't know. Yeah, it, uh, don't it, get confused. I also don't give a shit. I mean, uh, <laughs> oh, it's a fucking team logo. Who cares? They're gonna rebrand it anyway in four years when something else, some new Hel Helvetica font looks cool or something. I don't know. So what Not about the fan, LGD though. one? Do you have stronger feelings about this? I mean, I, I don't know what kind of crack they were smoking. I don't even know how to start this. Uh, the LGD one is just confusing to me. Pull it up here but... momentarily, folks. Holy woly. Why, why does it confuse you? What I is it? I mean... it's, a, it's a circle, dude. You can put it on a patch, slap it on your arm. <laughs> What's the big deal? It's no, not no, I'm, look, I'm looking for it right now, but it's like... That... <laughs> I see what they're going for, right? The L, the G, and then the the D. Mm. I have to admit, it is a circle. I like circles. And it's got a cool little symbol there. And it does look very... Uh, it's just offensive to say, but it does look very Chinese. Not because it's what? like a made-up character, but what? because it's like got a lot of sharp edges and curves and lines. You I, know I what I'm I saying? I see what you mean. That it's like yeah. a, a square shaped with like a bunch of like stuff going on that we... But, but, but for yeah. us, as people that don't read Mandarin... Uh, it yes. probably looks more like that, yes. I don't know if that's the case for native I, readers and speakers. Yeah, I, I just didn't get it when I saw this straight up. Oh, really? it, it took me a hot minute to see the D at the end and go, oh, okay. It's like a little too symmetrical. It almost looks like a trophy or something. I, I thought they were trying yeah. to make an emblem out of like, a, hey, we're first place. Look, we got the big one. And then it kind of clicked. I'm... I think it's just too confusing. That's that's where I'm. I mean, I, I saw the L and the G really easy, and then my brain was obviously like, okay, where's the D? And then I look and saw, okay, there's. The Why D. didn't they pay, uh, make a new color for the D? That would um, the logo would be fine. I think it's fine the way it's like the the L All is right. blue, which makes it hmm. more obvious, right? The G yes. is obvious. It's right in the yes, middle. Of and course. Then from there, the D is not as like if they tried to make the D obvious, then the logo would just look bad because you'd be like, what the fuck is this like? And you would have to put G. like some. Yeah, and you'd partially lose the G. I think it's fine the way it is. I, I don't think it's I don't think it's that bad, personally. I I did see somebody asking about um, what this means for PSG since yeah. they're not included in this logo. And apparently, I saw I think they responded to somebody on Twitter uh, that was also asking on the official LGD 
uh, gaming Twitter that it's more of a Chinese partnership that for they have two separate brands, one for the West, one for the East. I guess in the East, that's still a thing with PSG, but for the West, they're just LGD gaming now. So for like us casters, we don't have to call them PSG LGD, I guess. Oh, thank God. That was my that's... takeaway from the tweet. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's kind of kind of peculiar because they made such a big deal about the PSG stuff for so long. You know, you know what sucked about PSG LGD was that you're combining a rectangular shaped logo with a circle. Yes. What yes. shape does that make? Yes. Nothing. I don't know. A weird exclamation point. Didn't like it. It's but like no, a short, I, fat eye or something. Yo, I'm, I'm going to stick with my argument. I actually think LGD's logo looks better. You could get a patch of that. Put it on your backpack, you know? Instead of just words. Just letters. Wow. But if you I disagree? write you a letter, I'll write you a circle letter. I like circles. They're round. They're good. Grab them. Okay, so I found the tweet. They responded to Toby. I just put it in chat. They said, PSG Esports is still our main sponsor for Dota Team, so it still goes with PSG LGD. The new logo and banner is for the whole organization in China. So I had it kind of backwards, and now I'm even more confused about why PSG isn't included in it. So this is the new logo and banner for the whole organization. Do they have more? Do they sponsor any other teams? I actually don't I mean, know. I don't, I don't know what they're doing in China, but internationally, yeah. do they have any presence in like any other esports? If that's the case, then this would make more sense because then their uh. Twitter would be like, oh, well, we represent other games instead of just Dota. But I'm guessing they'll still be PSG LGD within Dota. Is wow, my, that is I'm a actually great not guess. sure. I'll, I'll be honest. I, uh, I'll go with that. That seems like it makes sense. I don't care to look into it, but Purge, great argument. Done. Thanks, I'm man. sold. <laughs> That that makes perfect sense to me. So uh, so how about Nigma? Let, let, let's talk about <laughs> the, the big Kahuna here, the big brand. Um, maybe a good starting point. Initial reactions when you saw that announcement. I got a little bit tainted because Trent made a joke to me about it, and I was like, "What are you talking about? You've been playing a lot of Enigma and Dota recently." And he goes, "Oh, you sweet child, you don't know." And then he linked me the announcement tweet. I went, "Oh." Well, interesting. I, I think w- one thing that's always kind of interesting in the Dota scene, and, and and especially like any media that involves Americans heavily, is that, um, I mean, America has been like what uh, the, we've been exporting our culture a lot for what decades and decades, and when you have a multinational game like Dota Two, wh- like where especially where uh, the game is run by a company in NA, it's like everybody's values basically have to be matched to us because we're kind of setting the standard. And it, it, it's difficult sometimes when there's drama because there's players in C or players in Europe or players in other various locations that use like a derogatory word or a slur or whatever. Um, and for us, the association between the N-word and Nigma is very close. It's not that far off. Um, and as such, it seems like a no-brainer for anybody that follows like the more American Western sphere that this just is a is a bad branding name. And I think it's it's a cool idea that um, that they're going for. They, they said that it's close to the Arabic word for star. I believe that's yep. cool because a lot of their players um, are Arabic. Is that the right? I don't know if that's the right yep. thing to say. Um, I think that's awesome, but I just wish they would have picked a different word. Uh, because uh, they should have just used non the, 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 the word that they based it on. I think that's literally the the. Arabic word for star, but that's the that's the I don't know the term, but it's like the English. Uh, what's what's the term for like the 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 letter the letters that we use? Mm-hmm. It's that version of the word. The, oh. So you, you, a lot of times you can like interpret those differently because it's like okay, how do I mimic I these sounds with the the alphabet that we use? The Romanized alphabet is that correct? Yeah. I think how do so. how do we use okay. the Romanized alphabet to spell out that word? So just saying like oh, well, you could just use these letters instead might not be an accurate translation and sometimes there's like flexibility there i see is, is typically yeah. how words like that work yeah it's true we so, think of like translations of yeah it's just one to one but it doesn't often work like that it's like yes. you have that's why there's they're called an sounds. interpreter because you have to kind of interpret the message and then turn it into english you're not like actually just going one to one on words and stuff like that i mean that's that sounds more like translation of of sentences and like communication but this is more like sounds basically just the phonetics of going from a non-romanized language to a romanized yeah i mean have you ever learned another language there's always letters in there that have a sound that's weird or maybe different especially in if you get more extreme like um like northern european languages have like weird pronunciation noises um girlfriend always makes jokes she's like oh danish sounds like it grosses me out because they have a sound that sounds like they make a sound that sounds like you're about to throw up is one of their like noises that they make you know for example oh with the line through it 
something like that yeah yeah like that sound is what she always mimics so it's like how would you how would you describe that in romanized letters for, for an english for like yeah. an american it's like i see okay no that's a good point so, yeah, that's... Yeah. so when i first heard about this i read something someone's argument was that like in germany and europe it's common practice to put e dash in front of stuffs uh especially like internet sports teams so i thought that the team name was literally e dash enigma which is <laughs> really cool i thought that that's like a cool team like you know like what esports enigma so as i was like e Nick team e enigma that's like it's just as bad as evil geniuses it's corny and stupid yeah, it's kind of meta but uh man right? yeah, i don't know I, I honestly i like meany shit like this because it makes everybody upset and it gives me a good laugh the first thing i thought of is i can't wait till toby casts because he always puts an r at the end of everything and that would be the end of Toby's illustrious career. <laughs> but but a, if there's an A at the end of an end of a, a, a word, he puts an R at the end. <laughs> I would just I'm waiting for the day where Toby comes back I mean, and he hits that shit up. But <laughs> Suns, Suns fans already accidentally said oh, the, what soft, a God. the soft N word. Accidentally on cast. So I saw that. I saw and if that, anybody uh, it had to be him, well, that fucking uh, idiot. Apparently, he had even said in the We Say Things podcast, like, "Oh no, I hate this team name. This is going to be a disaster for me, Cindran. I can't cast anymore. What am I going to do?" And it happened. I think I he willed know. it to fruition. Good work, Suns fan. In general, though, I think the rebranding and it it was nice. I like the logo. I like the guys. I don't think that it came from anywhere negative. And sure, you know, it's got all that extra shit, but people get over this shit. It doesn't fucking matter, honestly. Words have no power unless you give them power. And uh, I think it's fine. They no power at all. It is duck off a camel's back. Uh, <laughs> who cares? So you, you really think the fire is just going to burn out slacks? You don't think that two years from now, Team Nigma will be going strong and... Twitch chat will still just erupt with all the same stuff it is right now. Anytime their name is mentioned or shown on camera. You can't stop that shit. You got to fucking lean into it and just go. I mean, who cares? All I care about is entertainment and buzz around the scene. I can't wait till we get to T.I. John Patrick Lowry, Lowry's on the stage. Team Nygma. It's going to be amazing. Uh, I love it. Sure. Do you guys actually like their logo? Because I, I don't think it's. I think it looks. I think it's all right. Why? Is, it looks like an M. And it also does look like the Gmail logo. People have kind of pointed that out before, but yeah, it, all, all I see is an M. I don't. I don't understand it. I. I don't. I don't get it either. But it. It just seems it's generically acceptable. It's almost like acceptable. it's an enigma, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> it's like a mystery. If it confuses you, that's the point. I guess that's the point. But uh, anyway, no. Yeah, I, I mean, think the logo sucks. Yeah. Out of all the three, this one's easily the worst. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know about that. But. It's very bland. There's not. The, it's it's aside from the name. I think the logo itself is very safe, and it's you know I could see it blown up. It you know, eh, yeah. It's just no wow so, factor. It looks like a fucking doodle from a high schooler. I'm not gonna lie. like. I could <laughs> Jesus, easily see this man. in some like high school kids like scratch paper while he was just drawing shit. Like I come on, dude. <laughs> I genuinely. It, is it a mask on? It looks like a mask on the middle. I, I'm straight up confused. I, I, I do not like this logo. Maybe it is a play at the Riddler, dude. You know, it's like the mask. It's like it covers your eyes and then it, you know, superhero with style. A, just a giant M. Or that's hair, maybe. It looks like a mask with long hair. Yeah. A wow. mask with you guys long are hair. really, you're it's staring the predator. too that's deep. That's it. That's what it is. It's the Predator <laughs> oh. in logo form. Do you see staring it? Staring deep it? into this garbage. So, do you think anyway. they should rebrand, though? I mean, at this point, it seems like they're ride Perfect. or die with this brand. But Fuck they, it. they could. They bought right? the shirts. They bought the shirts. Uh, oh. Listen to me. Koro, if you're listening, put a fucking E in front of it, and it, you're done. E dash Nigma, it's over. All your branding still works. You're fine. However, I wouldn't rebrand because Nigma No Name has not made a video in like three years, mm -hmm. and I think we should roll with the meme that he is the team owner and he's bankrolling it. So we could get Nigma No Name back in the scene. Let's I, fucking go. I admit, I really thought that that's what it was. When I first saw it, when I first opened the Twitter, I thought all the anger was because they got got by Nigma again and they didn't realize that it was a joke team. Because, you know, Dang. I've seen his content. That's where my brain goes when I hear Nigma. I had to read Reddit to get to that next layer of, oh. Yes, I see. Okay, yeah. I mean, they're they're not going to change their name. Like they, nah. they they barely they barely do interviews. They wanted us form form their <laughs> own organization. 
They they are not very. They they look. It, it seems clear that they either don't care or they don't understand. They don't care about or they don't um understand like really brand forward stuff. And they have a lot of money and they probably paid some people to do stuff. And this is what they have. And they're like, okay, this is fine. Let's do it. And honestly, I don't think they give a shit. They're, they I'm sure there's they've been watching the drama a little bit and chuckling about it, but I I doubt they care. It's not explicitly a bad thing. It's just no gonna turn a lot of people off and nobody in america is gonna walk around and buy a shirt that has this shitty logo and that word on it <laughs> well that's so true you're not gonna sell as many t-shirts <laughs> which is you know dozens anyways but ah, yeah, whatever it's mean. gonna be fine and people are gonna accidentally say the end bomb on broadcast once in a while <laughs> but that's life <laughs> that's oh, i life. love it i love this dank ass universe that we're in oh. somewhere out there they're called like you know I don't know, Team Radiant or something. <laughs> the PR went great, but we're in the Team Nigma universe, and I, I'm so happy we're here, guys. <laughs> this oh, was great. God. Oh, so, God. So, um, I, I don't know how much we want to talk about this bulldog thing without Trent here to defend himself, but uh, fuck Trent. Dude. Any, any thoughts? <laughs> any anybody uh, catch that nah. action as it was unfolding? Because I'll say those Reddit threads were thick. A lot of comments in those boys. I. Oh, they whoo, Trent, Trent. I, I don't pay attention. I'm, I'm calling out on this conversation. I, fucking social justice makes me want to kill myself. <laughs> Every time I look at a thread that has 50% upvotes, 8,000 comments, I'm, I'm fucking out. I couldn't care less. Bring the nukes. I was a resident advisor for five years. I had to go through four months of social justice training every year. <laughs> I hate everyone now. So I am out of this combo. Fuck Trent. Fuck Bulldog and fuck me. <laughs> so, uh, all you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any Go thoughts ahead. there, Purge? Purge. <laughs> Feel free to exit this as well. I mean, I there's mean, just no point. What's the point? Where do we get to an end point? Nobody it's... wants to listen to each other. They all want to fucking argue. Nobody wins. Justice is never solved. The, no one is equal. Did it's you, worthless. Did you see the leaked DMs slacks from Bulldog to Nigma? That I did. They're, also hilarious. I hope he kills him. I uh, this is the drama Dota needs. You know, with the new patch, uh, with the losing player base, uh, uh, personalities just got to kill another one. We need to bring people All in right. the scene. This is Look where my boxing don't. match idea comes to fruition. Nigma versus Bulldog, the headliner. All right, we need another say. strangling. All right, I'm gonna okay. be. <laughs> okay, all right, this go is, ahead. This is my view on the, on the matter. I read I read one Reddit comment in that in that thread that I that was uh, I thought uh, a good demonstration of how how the subject should be viewed and basically uh, tells Trent Trent's point of view. Um, oh boy. The the guy, which may or may not have been uh, real, um, said that he was a, a, a an African American or black Dota player, and that when he watches streams and he has Twitch chat open, if he sees he says that basically like people in Twitch chat type do racist faces and shit when things happen that are common stereotypes with black people. Like if somebody steals a rune, for example, he says he looks in Twitch chat and people are typing, come on, bro, and shit like that. Which basically reminds this guy that people out there fucking hate, hate him for the color of his skin, which feels really uh -huh. shitty. You don't want to feel targeted for something that you can't control. It makes you feel awful, whether it's your gender or... Uh, how old you are or how bad you are at dota whatever it, it doesn't feel good so like it's it's the same thing with uh how people generally treat women in gaming as well oh you're mm -hmm. a girl let's flame her let's say she's bad because she's a girl all that shit makes you feel like crap so you shouldn't encourage anybody to type dumb shit like that in twitch chat because it's gonna alienate p some of the people that genuinely want to play the game and obviously the, the amount of black people in the dota 2 scene are very little there's very very few we almost mm -hmm. never see them at events because I don't know. Maybe it's just the that they usually play fighting games or something. But um, no, that's that's a lot more common. It's a lot yeah. more common to have I know, African American just... people in fighting games. Yeah, I understand. So like, you, you just don't want to. You don't want to. Th this is the purpose of social justice, basically, is to make sure that we don't create an environment where we make certain people feel unwelcome. And typing stereotypes or racist shit in chat, or typing grill every time there's a grill on screen, is part of the reason that those people don't feel like, accepted in our community and you don't want to like you can make those jokes because some people think it's funny but it also alienates those people when they happen to be there and that's the unfortunate part is that it is going to alienate them when they happen to be in the same twitch chat when you type shit like that so it's yeah. I, I i prefer 
to avoid that type of humor, number one, because I don't think it's very funny. And number two, because I don't want to alienate those people. And that's why I'm not going to do it and why I don't want to encourage other people to do it. So that's basically the whole argument from both sides that happened. And Trent said things that were a little bit, that were too strong. And he regrets that, I know, he in his post. And Bulldog is also hurt because of what Trent said and because he feels pressure of that he's done something worse than he probably has. So yeah. both sides are hurt. And now there's people on both sides of the argument that are going to be mad at each other. Trent has more haters. Bulldog has more haters. And now we'll just have to move on from here. And hopefully you guys can stop typing or stop typing uh, racist shit against um, people of other races in chat, which I know isn't going to happen, but don't encourage it. That's all. That's yeah. a, you know, a fine point. You know, you ever heard of the flea circus purge? No. You know, you know, flea circuses, it's these things where they would train fleas to go and do like loop-de-loops and stuff. And it was this tiny little circus. It was, uh, they used to bring oh, yeah. them at carnivals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the trick is you're you're teaching something so with such a tiny brain to do things that you want to do. Well, the flea circuses are fake. There's no fleas. They're all dead. There's they're dead fleas on strings, and that's what Twitch chat is. They're all a bunch of fucking brainless fleas. You can't teach them what to do. They're gonna go and do and eat poop and run around doing stupid shit. But you can you can you can say, hey, get these fucking fleas out of here a little bit, huh? And that's like that's good. Get the fleas out a little bit, but they're still gonna be there. You can't you can't tell people in your chat don't do this. They'll do it twice as much. But you could say I don't like this, and then maybe they do it a little less. And that's I think all we learned from that. You or, poop or you eating can, fleas. Or you can ban them. And and I read comments saying that Bulldog's <laughs> moderation has been better at banning people that type stuff like that, which is a good step. Yeah, that that helps prevent it. Moderation is one solution, not that it is perfect. Yeah. So. No, I uh, I don't want to make it sound like an excuse, but man, we we're at hour forty five in that podcast, and Trent was what? just molding that podcast that we did when he, he talked about the bulldog 45. shit. Hour forty five. One hour Minute. forty five minutes into this podcast. Oh, oh right. <laughs> Okay. So, so like you have a real excuse if you were at 45 hours of no no what one hour sorry i said that wrong one hour 45 minutes and it's just <laughs> like you know two hours of talking and just yelling at each other you get amped up and you feed off each other's energy and you go back and look at the vod and go "Ooh, the lowest dredger of the lowest dredge Ugh, yeah that's a little harsh didn't really mean that one quite the way it came off and i i definitely know that trent regrets the uh the presentation uh, in the heat of the moment you know it's one of those you're yeah. sort of you're sort of fucking around and making jokes and you have this moment where it gets a little too real too real and then you step back and go ooh yep yep well I mean, that just came out guess we're not getting that back yeah. um, Tread is legitimately the sweetest person in the fucking Dota scene so yeah. i mean if anyone actually thinks that he i say fucked up shit all the time nobody holds me accountable for it what the hell chat and, and and like he <laughs> like he expressed he, he hasn't watched bulldog in a long time it's very easy to like absorb media from personalities and talent for a long period of time then stop for months or years and just keep the same impression of somebody in your head as yep. they were years ago and everybody typically becomes better people as time goes on so um yeah i'm True. sure that that was that also hurt the situation because people that were current on bulldog um realized that he had done things to counteract that so it probably yeah. felt more even more like a cheap shot from bulldog included so yeah just the other thing that's basically. that's weird about this is i think if if you're purposefully making a statement like i don't think he was really trying to specifically call out bulldog in that moment you know if you're concocting the tweet you kind of you brace yourself for the shit storms that's coming this was just an offhand remark in a podcast that went a little too far off the rails and it didn't get picked up for a week later it took a whole week before someone even caught it and clipped it and put it on reddit and then we just woke up one day and went oh shit well i guess that's the end of our rivalry sponsorship okay cool it was whoa, a fun ride whoa. boys <laughs> whoa so like People that makes drama. it just even more intense and like it's it, it's like a viral moment kind of thing. You know, you wake up in this shitstorm and go, "Well, I have to defend myself." And then, you know, both sides. So we had a few days of just e extreme intensity because it felt like it just happened so suddenly. You know, it wasn't Yeah. yeah Whatever. So, Trent thing. will recover. Bulldog will recover. Personally, I like the new Trent meme. I like it. I think he he should lean into it. Next event that I'm at, I for sure want to make a Trent social justice superhero uh, content piece. That would be amazing for me. But uh, I don't know. It's Things happen. I, I think that all press is good press. Team Nigma, you did it right. Trent, you did it right. Just keep putting, keep putting fucking controversy out there, baby. That's what gets your name in the press.
People are talking. Look at you. <laughs> yeah. People yeah. are talking. Um, you, was... guys, you guys want to talk about fun. the patch a little bit? It's been a big patch. Oh, boy. Can we take a yeah. small break to sure. say that you guys can buy Moonduck merchandise Dude. Oh, at the God. Moonduck website? Dude, purchase is that box behind it. Is, with Gang. that box behind you, Andrew, is that filled with Moonduck shirts ready to sell? Uh, yeah, it's yes. got, actually, that box right behind me, is you can't see it on stream, but it's uh, it, the, those are the top hats. We have so many plastic <laughs> shitty top hats. Stop it! For the size of children's heads, that we'll I don't give you know. ten top hats. Uh, you buy anything, you get ten fucking top hats. We're gonna <laughs> hats, you go. But we've got some great merch. I'm rocking one of the the hoodies right now. The pullover. I think oh, this year. he's bringing it out. He's bringing the shirt out. This oh, year boy. we've got the Midas. Now we are missing the pink ones. Slack. Somebody ran off, I think, with a box of the pink ones. We are sold out of pink Midas mode size small. Mr. Midas and Sir Sadim shirts. We're swimming in brown. I don't know if we fat fingered the number of browns, but pick up some of these brown shirts. They're beautiful. They're super comfy. Uh, everything's on sale. It's shipping right here from the Moonduck headquarters. Some of them have random surprises. They're mostly just stickers, but also random surprises. So uh, store.moonduck.tv. It's Moonduck. like spits TV. in some of the boxes. It's true. There is a lot. You can get a lot of DNA out of some of those shirts. <laughs> Buy them up, guys. <laughs> Buy them up. <laughs> So I uh, yeah. ran out of socks. Get them, you get the, You know, some people though. There are two people. I shout out to these people. International orders that bought one pop socket. They paid thirteen dollars <laughs> to ship a three dollar pop socket to Great Britain. Now I don't know who you are. Hell yeah. I don't know what your malfunction is. But hats off to you, sir. I gave both those people uh, stickers to go with it because I just felt well, so that's bad. Well, that's very nice. This is very clear that they value the pop socket above the $3 that it's listed on the website. <laughs> Apparently. This is a, clearly we have a uh, need to up I the mean, price. I mean, I couldn't. This is a $20 pop socket. I couldn't yeah. even find the receipt for these. I think they got bundled in with the top hats or something that uh, our set designer ordered. I mean, they're, they're, they can't be too expensive. I don't know. I thought 3 bucks sounded fair, but hopefully I'm not taking a loss on those things. Get the pop, pop sockets while you can. For nine to ten dollars, or like Great seven job, to ten dollars on Amazon. Someone's gonna buy all of our fucking pop sockets and then uh, put them back at ten dollars, and we're gonna get a giant loss, you idiot! Oh, By the way, pop Jesus. socket is a brand. Did you know that? Are oh. we allowed? Are we legally allowed to write? Pop I, no, these are not. Right? These are three M, dude. These are not official these pop are 3M. sockets. Oh, you okay. know, fun no, fact. No, three M. Three M is the sticker on the bottom part. Oh, yeah. all right. Well, these don't have a brand logo, so these are. Okay. <laughs> these are not those are knockoffs. <laughs> But pop sockets were made in our hometown, Andrew, in uh, Boulder, get, Colorado. Get that guy's here, a bro. super rich. Yeah, the headquarters are actually in Boulder. Well, yeah, my I mean, mom they, knew the guy. Shit. They basically invented something that literally everybody with a cell phone wants. They they genuinely make your your cell phone experience. I'm better. impressed by that though, because you didn't know you wanted that, okay. right? That's a that that's to crazy, me that's a true right? invention. I couldn't imagine my phone not having one of those stupid things where I can hold it, but I would. I never knew until I actually I, started using it. I, I've seen things where people would have like metal rings that they'd like pull off and like oh, bend down. Yeah. And so you could like put your finger through it, but it didn't spin. It didn't open to multiple sizes. It's like the, the plastic one is just fucking perfect. Beautiful. Like a, a perfect example of like an invention that everybody A needed. real invention. A yes. real invention. Dude, I should start yes. throwing Very in cool. free lanyards with some of these orders. I just looked over and remembered how many lanyards we have. Yo, yes. real talk. In my bedroom right now, there's a box that is filled to the brim with moon duck lanyards. So uh, I need oh, to give no. those to you and Guys, we can give those out. More? We got a lot of fucking lanyards. Oh, no. How many people actually use lanyards? I've received <laughs> no like one. at least 200 lanyards in my life and I don't think I've ever desired. Uh, they're good for the event to hold your badge on. It's like yeah. if I work at a business, if I work at a company that has like, oh, I, your name tag needs to be out on a lanyard, then okay, I need a lanyard. But outside of that, I have no idea who actually needs a lanyard. Yeah. I am collecting all lanyards. Put the keys on it, I guess. But then it like dangles out of your pocket. I like, like my pocket. Mm -hmm. I, it's just straight up. I don't know. I'm, I'm making lanyards, a noose though. Get that out, shit out of, of my house. lanyards myself. You it's, definitely it's could kill yourself. It's my big plan yeah. is well, to <laughs> kill myself with esports lanyards. I mean, Moon Duck is just where the company <laughs> of extremes. You know, the the last LAN we did, it was freezing cold, and we didn't have enough merch. Sold out on basically the first day. And here at this mm -hmm. land, it was it was comfortable, I guess. It was a little warm at a few points, and we've got more merch than we know what to do with. So, you now one day we'll find that middle ground. It'll be cool, temperate, and properly stocked. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. One day. One anyway, day. what were we talking about before our uh, fantastic sellout? Segment? So, uh, yeah, patch. how about the patch? Ah, the patch. Purge, this is your department. I'll, I'll follow up. Well, um, spider legs. Spider leg. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I I like the patch. I'm having a good time. 
Um, I, I think the the fact that neutral items, once they limit them to like three per tier, I think that improved the game a lot because everything was like fucking crazy the first day or two because there was just so many items. You had to make it, it's difficult to like sit. You have to sit and think like which item is better, a bracer or this other item that gives me like about the same stats. It's a bit overwhelming yeah. at times, but um, but I think the patch is good. I think the games are. It's hard to have a late. I've only had one game over seventy minutes. I don't know mm. about you guys, but like almost no games go ultra late anymore. Yeah, which is fine. But also, I look at all those items. and I'm like, damn, I want to try those. I mean, you can play them in like if you play like ten v ten or twelve v twelve. I think in like a arcade game, you can get them pretty easily. But uh, so yeah, let's talk about the good. meta, uh, kind of how the community is feeling, the pulse of the community. In my opinion, I think we're this is probably one of the most controversial patches of all time. Uh, community is, seems to be extremely split yeah. between. I don't like the direction that Dota 2 is going um, with this kind of, they're calling it Heroes of the Storm, find objective, fight over objective, make it all team fight brawler. And then other people are saying, like, I think that this is good because it opens up the world of um, for players and the game to feel like more interesting and more fun. Uh, where do you guys sit? Um, I think that's, I don't think that many people are upset about it. I, I would say there's maybe like 15 or 20% of dota players that maybe are mad maybe less but um i think more things to do on the map is better because it because i think um having objectives to do things around is good like remember before bounty runes existed teams would only ever smoke to gank basically now they'll smoke yep. to like oh there's going to be teams at bounty runes so we think there's going to be fight there we're going to smoke just to possibly take a fight here it leads to more action which is ultimately good for the game because it'll just be less of a farm fest, which is not fun to watch esport wise, and it's not as fun to play either. Um, mm -hmm. So I think just more resources coming out of the map is generally a good thing as well. If you're bad, because you're going to get more levels for free, um, you're going to get more talents. Like getting level twenty talents is not uncommon now on any hero. It's very common to hit level twenty now, whereas before, if you're playing support, it was not common to hit level twenty. It was and hitting twenty five almost never happened, pretty yeah. much. But yeah. once in a while, it happens now. Um, so I think the the more resources is good, the more objectives is good. I just wish the games were a little bit less one sided. Yeah, yeah. The, the outpost feels, like feels so much like a win more mechanic to me. If you get ahead at twenty five minutes yes. and you can hold the map and you get ten or fifteen minutes of both outposts for your team, it's it's like Game's basically over, yeah. over. You just out level them so hard. And they did nerf that a little bit in the last patch, like yeah. two days ago. They, you get less experience as time goes on, and you don't get as much gold by gaining levels from your courier. So there's like a little bit like, it's like a little bit less uh, win more. Um, but um, I, I, I do like them. Um, I like that they get vision. It makes fighting in those areas easier or without wards. Um, yeah, I, I generally like the patch of uh, Modern I like that plain support doesn't feel like a death sentence now. Yes. I still buy a lot right. of sentries, but like... I can always buy one or two items now. I'm, I generally run out of space faster than anything. Now. I'm okay with where we're at right now, but I, I share the concern of I don't want Dota to become too much about objectives that aren't focused on killing the throne. But this feels like a good middle ground, or at least steps towards a middle ground. To me, the last year, year and a half of Dota patching has felt very much about how do we make the support role more appealing? I think for a lot of Dota's history, yeah. playing carry or mid or the two like... I want to do those. That's all the focus yep. goes on the carry that gets really farmed, and it's, quote, more fun to be able to kill people with all these fat items. And this is the most fun I've ever had playing a position five support in Dota. I mm -hmm. think hands down, I would say by almost like two or three X with free wards. And now there's a lot more strategy around sentries. I don't feel bad about buying sentries because I'm not comparing it to the opportunity cost of like wards or saving for future wards. Mm -hmm. I can pick CM oh. and in a 25 minute game have a BKB and actually kill shit with my ult. Um, and I love that. I love that when you put sentries down and wards happen to appear, you get the gold as the sentry yes. buyer. That shit's amazing. Oh, like yes. you don't have to worry about like, can I? I got to get the last hit or whatever. It's on the other side of the map. You got to cross the map to go get your last hit. So you can just kill that shit instantly and you get your your payout. Definitely makes it more appealing as yeah. well. So I think I figured it out. The meta of it. Um, I think a lot of people are upset because they consider the game to be getting uh, a little bit easier and it's like less painful for them. Here's the thing is that what the last patch did down to uh, the meta of it is they just made supporting, as we talked about, enjoyable, right? They took away those little tiny things. You could get stuff from the jungle by still doing your job. You still have all these things. Trusty shovel is like the support that sums up the patch, right? It's just, here's support. Here's a bunch of support items. Go, go, go. 
The thing is, in Dota's history, supports have always had to suffer. They've always had to take the bullet and the abuse. And it's changed now because I think the carries now have to take the abuse because they want to farm and they want to disappear, but now they have to capture outposts instead while they're split pushing. Now mm -hmm. they have to uh, go to the uh, jungle and give away the items that they get. Now there's so much focus on fighting in efficient times and making sure that your farm is actually efficient so you can't disappear for 45 minutes as AM and win the games. So now it's the carry players that are pissed. And that's why everyone's saying Dota is dying because they, for the first time in Dota's history, have to <laughs> fucking suffer. <laughs> and now they're bitching about it. Well, sorry, <laughs> carry players. It's a fair but point. It's your time. 10 fucking years has the support suffered. Yeah. I don't, so there I don't think you it's go. just the carries, but it's it's all people basically. There are there is something on the map that if you don't group and prepare to team fight or gank, that they will just consistently out outpost you. And then you will lose your games on yeah. average. So, like, it's yes, it, it once because before oh, you lose all your outer towers, but you can still turtle when things get really bad. It's fine, right? But now it, there's objectives that you need to take. I mean, you still always need to push lanes a lot, but it's even more important now because if you don't push your lanes, going to get an outpost when they have vision there feels like fucking suicide consistently, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, you, you got to push lanes like always. You have to gank and team fight well, like always, like top level players do consistently with or without outposts. But now because outposts exist, there's even more on the map and more loss by not doing something. So, yeah, I, I definitely that makes a lot of sense. Yes, yeah, people have the to do stuff now. Yes, carries hate having to do stuff. And before the the normal of you're not doing anything is like there's wards in stock, buy wards. Now it's becoming why are you top lane and the outpost isn't taken? Outposts are the new wards for complaining about the game and it's the pusher's responsibility to get the outpost. Oh, it's glorious. I do have to say though, uh my enjoyment of the game is has been hindered. I, I I don't particularly. I thought I'd get really? over it, but I still haven't gotten over it because of the uh, mental aspect of the items. Um, as hmm. I always said before, good game design is saying I lost uh, not because of what the game did, but because of my skills and what happened to me. That's kind of Valve's principle on making games. Uh, are you, are I should have done the artifact this. Complain right now? No, I, no. I'm just saying that RNG. Is this an RNG discussion? This is not an RNG discussion. I think the items are mostly balanced. They're slowly taking some out that aren't. And some I think were that they fucked, but now it feels some were bad. very fucked. That Aghanim's but... buff was the stupidest <laughs> one of them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, They're fixing it. Um, and I think that items really don't play as much of a role as uh, you know, people assume that they do. Yeah. But what it does give us is a mental excuse for saying I lost because he got this item, which is very unhealthy for the state of a game. Um, and that's just how people are going to think. Uh, that's what you don't an artifact a lot. I lost yeah. because I got that bad arrow. And you really, you had a shitload of things you could do against that arrow. You had things that you could prep against that arrow. You had the same. But every single time that I get that stupid fucking item that heals you in the river, I get <laughs> so heart. angry. Yeah. And it's every game. And it's like, I I got this, and I'm sure they got Trusty Shovel, and I got this stupid fucking thing. And that's toxic for the lifetime of a game and how players view the game, and it feels like the game is working against them. That's something that we will never get away from okay. if we continue this. So it's like the and ogre mentality of, I never get multicast, but they always get multicasts on me kind right. of thing. Yeah, all right. Well, it, it's worse, though, because sometimes, you know, you can't say that you lost a game because you didn't 4x multicast uh, sheep stick. Yeah, but okay. you can say that you lost a game because they found the imp claw on a certain hero that did X, Y, Z. And uh, I don't know. I, I just think that there's in Dota, it's always been about if this guy does this, I have time to think of a counter and I can implement that, right? If this guy goes to Fusal Blade, I'll get this and then I'll do that. And what the items do is they put in a situation where now Medusa silences every five seconds uh, because of this item in a split shot, and I don't have... I didn't know that was coming. I don't have time that to counter exist, that. But most no, of the, the thing, you know, the, the item that silences you said every... every five seconds. It's two out of 20 seconds. Well, yeah. with Octarine Cores, Purge. Which nobody buys on Medusa. All right, anyway. <laughs> but I'm just saying... Like, I, uh, you're, you're right that there are... Yes. The, the items are pretty mild, generally. The, yes. the ones that have, like, status effects like that, they are... 
they are strong status effects. Like there's the the prince's one. The it's like sixty percent projectile speed dagger, and it hexes for like two one point two seconds out of twelve. Mm -hmm. That doesn't increase your damage at all, other than increasing your projectile speed, which in some rare cases might mean you hit when you wouldn't otherwise. But you're in a late game. That's a late game item. You are replacing a fucking item slot for that shit. So yes, it's going to have some disable built in, and Mindbreaker is still potentially really good on like Blink Heroes who can Blink s silence somebody for two seconds and get a kill. But like most of those are pretty mild in how effective they are as a sure. whole. Like I... I, I agree that some of the items are impactful. Like, Clumsy Net is busted on a few heroes. Like, if you're playing Marana and you get a Clumsy Net, if you're playing Pudge and you get a Clumsy Net, you are fucking happy because you yeah. just got a free Atos slash Yule Scepter to set up your hard-to-land skill shot. Yeah. But I think Clumsy Net is the most busted situationally out of most items. Um, Illusionist Cape is becoming dis disgusting. I think that that item is, like, crazy on the right heroes. It's busted on Medusa. Not that mm. Medusa has a good win rate, but I think like, the CDR a, a couple... ones still feel pretty good, unless they've nerfed yeah. Spell Prism. That one, oh, that's like my favorite one to find. It stacks additively if you have other CDR talents or, or abilities. It's a late game one, I think. So, unless they change that as well. But that's like on Dazzle, it's, it's insanely good. Yeah. Yeah, that one's but... a tier four. So that's like, what, 35 minutes or later or something? Did it used to be a tier three? Um, I don't think so. Okay. I think, I, I think it was just that games were longer typically when the patch because i remember seeing you tweet about it but it was pretty close to after the game after the patch hit yeah i i couldn't believe that i haven't shit. seen that i, one I figured there's no way it stacks like this guardian grease <laughs> on a 12 second cooldown is just it's, busted because it's not yeah, only a free broke. mech but you get mana too your team never has to back i think they changed the cooldown reduction equation i'm pretty sure Okay. I think it was additively before. It was when I tweeted that for sure, as I tested it in one of the lobbies also and gotcha. confirmed you, like wow. You had, you had fifty percent from your ulti, then you had an extra twenty from spell prism. Yeah. Was there anything else? Did you have anything else for I thought, no. did they, didn't they change this? Isn't this when there was a bug yes. and like octarines were stacking and shit? I, I'm pretty sure that they were supposed yes. to do that. And there were less sources of cooldown reduction then. Oh, so I got one I Zeus game it. with four octarines. Yeah, okay. God so bless. Twitch chat is saying it stacks <laughs> multiplicatively now, so it's not nearly right. as busted. So this was the item that was with Drow Ranger. She could get 100% uptime on her BKB or like really close to it, which is also My God. obviously stupid. <laughs> yeah, but I think that was like Ice Frog's intent, right? Is that he wanted to put things in the game where, sure, they don't have that much impact, but if you get them on a certain hero in a certain situation, it can make this really ridiculous, fun gameplay. Um, and that's I, like I exciting for Dota players. But I would say, I mean, a puck different, with the different gameplay that's very effective, but it doesn't like bust the game. Is what's where that, the, where it what's that be. item that TPs you randomly in a random direction? Flick, and shit? Uh, the flicker, I think. Yeah, you ever play with a puck with a flicker? Okay, that shit is like, she's literally, it just has a, <laughs> okay, a fucking jaunt at every sounds, second. Sounds good. Well, she has to not be stunned. And yeah, and the exactly. item is kind of garbage. Otherwise, it's only 30 movement speed. But, but that's what I'm saying is that there's some situations that are very rare where you pick a hero, you get a random item, something really cool happens. And that's fun and innovative gameplay. And I think that's what they were going for is a big positive. But they uh, forgot to think about the metric of people being extremely negative because they feel like they were robbed of victory. And I think that that negative of the enemy team against the flicker puck saying we were fucking winning this game and now I literally can't target puck uh, has a much worse consequence to the game overall than that puck's positive experience. And in the end, that puck is also going to have a positive experience. So, so it, are, it's going to be on a downhill. Are, so. are you saying that this patch is basically like a short-term sort of wow factor to get people excited, but the long-term effect is going to be a negative one on the player base? Like sort of a Band-Aid type patch is what we're getting yeah. at? He's I think that it's stuff very negative. About. Um, I think that the the general trend is that someone is going to, in every one of their games, someone's going to get burnt, even if it's not true, they're going to feel like they got burnt because the enemy got an item, then they'll say, you know, this that's yeah. fucking bullshit. And the more times it happens, the more times it's going to hurt them, and the less, you know, gameplay we're going to have. So like I, I want to scream and disagree with you because it... It isn't in reality like that. But like the strategy no, decisions you make are far more likely and uh, to be the reason you lose. And uh, like the items that they drop, like items can de definitely have impacts, but general almost never they do. Like I, yeah. I, I don't have, I can't remember many games at all where I'm like, man, they got that drop. I was really lucky, for example. But I felt the same way about artifact. You know, I was like, oh well, 
this is fine. It's manageable. But the if the average player does believe it, then it is a problem for the game's right. health. For it's sure. a, so, it's so what's like the same has some value. I mean, they're but not I, I right. I don't think it's that bad. Like, I think you just <laughs> uh, we just need to shout from the rooftops that the items don't generally don't matter that much, and they are yep. clearly dealing with them. They removed yeah. elixir, which I was surprised about, but I read some comments and people are saying that it like could win your lane at a crazy time when you wouldn't have to go heal that kind of thing. Um, I do have a solution though. Worth by the way, too. Ice Frog, if you're listening, the all the best way to fix this and still have the same innovative gameplay, both teams get the same items. That's it. It is random every time, but you can't say yeah. if you have a craggy coat and they have a craggy coat, then you just it evens things out a lot and it makes things a little bit yeah. more like I, 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 I would feel like so bad. That. I mean, I was going to yeah. ask Purge, what do you where do you stand on the RNG thing? Because I, I, I agree the items aren't so impactful that it's normally not game breaking, but it does still feel too random to me. It reminds me of playing auto chess in the early days. It's like, cool, I got a Daedalus on my Crystal Maiden. <laughs> like, I didn't go for right click. Well. I, I don't think the items are that massively different from one another. The the majority of them are just stat bonuses, basically. Like I like a lot of them have like stat bonuses and mana regen, um, but most of them are just like stat bonuses. Like obviously the shovel was a really good item, and it has been nerfed a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, poor man's shield oh. is pretty garbage. Iron talent's kind of bad. Yeah. I like royal jelly. I don't mango tree's good and bad. Like some of them are pretty decent though, but like almost all the tier one items are like okay. They're like good slot fillers, slacks. Is probably excited about this because he usually has empty item slots that he can now yes. fill. But um, take the, the wheel majority, game and give me what I need. <laughs> the majority of them are just kind of okay. Even like the tier two items, most of them are like okay. But I find myself replacing those slots pretty rapidly. Um, tier three yeah. items are good, but not incredible. Typically, like Enchanted Quiver is typically garbage. Um, Greater Fire Fire is okay. It's like pretty decent. Orb of Destruction can be good. Paladin Sword is, like, kind of good. It's, like, good on some heroes. Like, there's a lot of Tier 3 items, even, that I'm, like, I typically wouldn't replace these with item slots. Like, I would temporarily, but, like, I, I think I think they're fine, honestly. I mean, we haven't gotten to any 70-minute games, really. I've only been in, like, yeah. one before, and that yeah. was early on. Tier 4 items are typically very good. I mean, don't you but, think Repair Kit is pretty good for Tier 3? That's, like, gives you a, a Treant-like ability to heal towers if you get pushed early. That's and, a potential and, and game And Multi-Shot. It is, but it has limited charges, and yeah. that's an item that's consumed then. You know, it's like, yes, it's good. They're all good, but yeah. it's you're always weighing it against the comparative cost of having that item slot be something different. Can we all agree and that it, the gem was the most broken one yes. by far? Oh, it was nothing. That was so really feel bad. It, it was just like it. It takes away all the risk of the item. It's so yeah. much better than the regular gem. It's like well, a one it charge helps. rapier or something. Like what? That's amazing. If you were a support with like the ability to scout high ground with like Nova or Kinetic Field or something, and you got that item, oh, I was gonna kill so many words, Bro. dude. I should, that uh, was man. Ice Frog's was dagger and Techie's heart. Techie's <laughs> is always looking for like that gem, and he's like, "Okay, if we can take this gem, we rob them of nine hundred gold. They can't get one for X minutes. It's just like two guys walk out of the jungle with the eye. What? No, <laughs> where are you coming from? I will say, Purge, best item, no argument. It actually is Spider Legs. It has no downsides. There's not a single hero that doesn't want free pathing. Spider Legs is legitimately." Just the best. It goes on every single hero. Am I wrong? It is definitely good. I, I forgot that it gave you bonus movement speed when you use it too. I like that as an right. animation now. That's sick. I, I I could see them maybe removing the bonus movement speed you get when you activate it. Because people are using it just as like a straight up phase boost kind of. Like just to get yeah. extra movement speed. I'd almost prefer just they allow it be for like high ground walking. Like that's definitely one of the better drops because it can just easily replace a boots until the end of the game. If you're right. not going BOTs. Um, if I get a fucking ocean heart and my enemy gets a spider legs, that hurts me. Ocean. Emotionally. You know, ocean the water heart? one. The stupid water. The river the, regen oh, one. The tier one item that you get at yeah. seven minutes. Ocean heart. <laughs> and then you're mad because, bro, it's five stats. I'm just mad That's if a I see breaker. ocean heart. Fuck ocean heart. It's, it's I hate this. Would you rather get ocean heart or poor man's shield? Poor man's shield. You're a fucking idiot. No, you don't. How <laughs> dare you? I'm playing axe. I want the poor man's shield. It's like kind of okay on X, but almost everyone else. Like poor man's shield is probably the worst one. Maybe uh, Iron Talon is Iron the worst Talon's one. Iron Talon's pretty bad. Yeah, 
I mean, you can replace Iron it Talon has but... an inverse effect where it has this mental parasite that someone gets Iron Talon and they're taken back to 2017 and they just jungle for fifth, five minutes. And you're like, get out of there, bro. And they can't hear you. They're just lo jungle legioning. It's PTSD. I, I think but... tier, the tier four items are when it really becomes a race to like kind of hit this, you know, potential break point of, all right, we've got our items before they have theirs because the tier four ones are, some of them are pretty damn good. Like the leveler for pushing the Minotaur Harn is that the the no oh, yeah BKB? The, the mini BKB. A yeah. lot of these are not that amazing but in my opinion. I agree with Purge. They're all they're garbage, honestly. I mean, they they make an so. impact, but it's dealable. It just doesn't feel that yeah. way to stupid people. No offense. <laughs> to <a shit>. Like <laughs> Ninja Gear, you could drop Ninja Gear, and it, like if you don't even have an Agi Hero, you're like, well. I got 30 movement speed, I guess. Like, Prince's <laughs> Knife doesn't give you damage. It just gives you a hex. It's really good on, like, gank heroes like Lena, Shadow Blades or something. But Spell Prism's really effect. I'd say Spell Prism's probably the best one. Maybe Timeless Relic. Spell Prism. Spell Prism. Wh oh. Witless Shackle. Yeah. Witless Shackle is really good now. It's just a Witless thousand health Shackle. increase. And Illusion Escape Yikes. on the right hero is busted. Like Medusa. It's, it's legit busted. And they just buffed it again. I couldn't believe it. But I have to um, admit, I am proud of the Dota caster and analyst community, though. When we got all these items, everyone I'm talking to pretty much knows what all of them. That's that's 65 items. That's a lot, man. Oh, I thought shit. it'd take you you fool some times. You guys are just you Star rattle through games. this shit. I mean, I don't know yep. the 70 plus. I don't know the tier five items very well. I mean, I Pirate think... hat. We all know that one, buddy. <laughs> yes, we know. <laughs> Runes. <laughs> it's it's lucky to be able to cast qualifiers and stuff when a new patch comes out. Like Dota Pit is always like that. There's a patch right before Dota Pit, so the whole event is like, great. We're just gonna see what happens because we have no idea. Like it's really fun because you get to sort of learn along with the players and you see games that. Yeah. Okay, now we know that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I think that the state of Dota and the health of the game will be much improved after the Dream League Major because we're gonna see pro players. You know, using these items, having these huge interactions on the at, at a major, um, and people will start to see like that there's some meta and there's things you can do. Because right now it does kind of feel hopeless because our gods have not shown us the light. <laughs> so we'll get there. What, That's what, how what we are. Mean? Because what, we have to see pro players be able to do this like at a major at one of the best stages to say like, oh, okay, these games are still very varied. Not a, everyone ends before thirty minutes. He means the people meta's got not over figured things. out yet. Oh. Eh. It's like uh, right now, your normal average player feels hopeless because they can't be like, at the major, Miracle used X, Y, Z. So, I mean, we can all admit that we have no idea what's going on always. It's I'm always up to, like, those idiots to figure it out. Definitely in the same camp as Purge, though, about the longer games. I don't think I have personally picked up a Tier 5 item in all the games that I've played yet. Like, I've had a I couple of 65-minute games that got close, but... None of those super long stalemates. And I really hope we get to see one at the next major. I think that would yeah. be like, that's going to be the hallmark match of those tier five items having a big impact to break the stalemate. That shit's going to be a nail biter. It's, it's such like a, a viewer taunt basically to say yeah. like, Hey, there, here's the, all these sick items that you can never have unless you have these rare late game situations. And now imagine that happening in a pro game where like, <laughs> like tweets are going to go fucking crazy. Like as yeah. soon as there's a 70 minute game against two really good teams, People are going to tweet insane. They're gonna be like, holy shit, they dropped a Stygian Desolator. Let's go. Here's And then they link the stream. And like the viewership's right. going to jump by like 30%, literally. Because people exactly. are just going to be interested to watch top tier players use tier 5 items. And it's happening so rarely right now that it's going to be like special every time, it feels like. But in the same vein, I'm like, I would like to occasionally be in these games as well. So I don't know. Maybe they leave <laughs> them up at 70 minutes. Maybe they drop it to 65 yeah. or something. Or even 60 maybe. But... I don't, we'll get the like apex. That, Eighty percent primary attribute. That could be cool on Pudge. Jesus. Uh, yes. Or more fling or draw ranger. It'd be ridiculous on draw. Actually. So that's the uh, the second side of RNG that everyone always doesn't talk about is that RNG sometimes doesn't feel good when you're playing, but when you're watching as a spectator, RNG is the most exciting hype shit in the fucking world. That's and why my it's mode is good. Exactly. <laughs> you know, but uh. Will yeah, and watching load. pro nope. players, uh, watching pro players and seeing like what items they get, that in itself is sometimes more entertaining than like the game and seeing how that RNG aspect comes in as a spectator. So, Dota is very much many people just watch Dota now instead of play it. So that is a very healthy thing for our pro scene. This patch that nobody you know is waiting for. Is this fusion rune item actually good? I don't think I digested this during the patch notes. You use it and you get every power rune for 50 seconds. 
Yeah, it, on the right yeah. heroes, it's busted because if you it depend, I mean, DD is like how much your base damage is. So if you have 150 base damage, it's a 50 second 150 damage increase. That alone is huge, yeah. and you get arcane rune, and you get haste. Those those are the main ones. It's like arcane, DD, haste. Those three, like in a team fight context, if you don't get it dispelled, are busted. And you get an initiation, like work. a little blink or a, a shadow blade type buff with the invis to, to use. Yeah, you would be invis as well. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah that actually it's actually helpful if you have haste as well, because then you can get to where you want to go by using it. But I think it only has three charges, is what somebody told me. Uh, something like that. I'm. But uh, yeah, f absolutely. Yes, three it's, charges. It's yes, absolutely usable, and you could use it in backpack. It is the other cool thing. So oh, it doesn't even cost you an item. Well, there. You, all right, it's got my vote. I assume. Shit. And what now? Oh my god. <laughs> You can use it from the backpack? What is this, Harry? From the backpack? No, no. You have to put it in your inventory, use it, and then throw it back in the oh, backpack. Oh, okay. I thought it was some special oh, backpack item. I'm like, damn, this really is tier five. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah. I actually was so against the items until someone brought up runes. I was like, RNG, fuck, in my Dota? And they're like, yeah, wh what happens when you get a rune in front of Roshan, a double damage? It's the exact same thing. Like, or, So or you'll get used to it. Or which neutral camp spawn if you deal magic damage and you find the, the ancients that have no magic resistance that's really nice for example there is yeah. there's always been a little rng in dota base damage your damage range is uh, has always been a range nobody mm -hmm. does a consistent amount of attack damage mm. insane chaos right. knight chaos knight in general needs to be removed from the game <laughs> he's not even good uh, right yeah is he even I good i don't know <laughs> He's have you seen how his down. crits work now? It's literally every time he hits you. <laughs> That's yeah, I, mentally, I it. it hurts not, mentally. He he can lane one. now. He has some sustainability. If you kill He's him like twice before 15 minutes, he slows down a lot. And then, you know. He lost a lot of win rate. Yo, while we're on this subject, let's talk new heroes. We haven't oh, talked about yeah. those guys yet. Okay. Now that the, uh, the dust has settled, and I don't think they'll be changing the heroes too much. Um... Sapphire, what an amazing transformation from being literally the shittiest new hero in Dota 2's premiere to actually being pretty good now. Do you remember when she first came out? I was playing Zeus and I thunderbolted her twice and she died. It was fucking amazing. But now, uh, I don't know. I, I gotta say, uh, impressed by Valve with new heroes. Um, they've had some real shit ones in the past uh, that were completely broken. But these, it seems like since Mars came out, it's like easy to understand, fun to play, adds a new aspect, and anyone mm -hmm. can pick them up. Really mm -hmm. impressed. By these yeah, I, I really thought that um, like the days of simple heroes were gone. Like I think of like Vengeful Spirit and you know uh, Wraith King and Crystal Maiden. It's like all their skills are very basic. But the last couple years, every hero that's come out ever since like Slark and A have had like mm -hmm. some kind of weird mechanics that were a little bit hard. It was like you would read the if you read the text of how the skills work, you just were not going to be able to get it unless you visualized it like grimstroke was kind of similar way yeah. um but snapfire is really straightforward um she did need some buffs to become good and lil shredder was over buffed a little bit the third skill but yeah her win rate on divine is sitting at 52 percent right now which is quite good for a support sure. it's really high for support i mean it's the optimal support right you get to sit way in the back and well, just do magical damage it's amazing the but. cookie is kind of cool everyone shits on the cookie as her worst spell which it it might be because their other spells are so good but the, the cookie has saved me in many an encounter that little hop is a a nice getaway tool it's a four yeah. staff too basically yeah for, for you or allies yeah, it's a, it's it's a great su support ability i'm i'm a big fan of, i'm never upset to have a snapfire on my team as long as they know how the skills work mm. i would be surprised if they both got one more nerf before captain's mode but, well, Void Spirit is definitely gonna get more nerfs. Well, sure. yeah, sure. But Void Spirit is really interesting because his like his pop off time is always the same. There's a point in the game where he literally can kill anyone on your team effortlessly. There's nothing you can do. But I don't see him win that much because like you know I can if you get to a certain point like 40 minutes or something, the items just shut him off. If you have Void Spirit problems, folks, yeah. pick Silencer. Listen to me. You put one Q on that guy, he will literally kill himself every team fight. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, uh, si and his uh, last word, if you put him on him once, he jumps in and silences himself. I'm telling every single time I play Silencer, it's so hilarious. They just yeah. he has 13 kills and then all of a sudden he's just done. He's like a, so. a classic spirit for me. Those games where you don't have a lot of control, the enemy team has 10th pick. Is it Ember Spirit, Storm Spirit, or Void Spirit? All of them thrive in those environments where you don't have a lot of stuns or sheeps or anything. And it's he's a glass cannon. He does huge damage, but if you've got the stuns, just kill him. Yeah. Lock him down. Easy peasy. 
Mm -hmm. Silencer so you, into nullifier. So boys. if you use last word on him and he presses his second skill to simulate, it just removes last word. It does? Yes. Mm -hmm. You take the damage, but the silence does not work. Well, there goes all my wins. Not a single void spirit has known that. That's <laughs> I kill them all the time with that shit. Oh no! But the Q Don't is tell still people good. that the, the arcane curse. I mean, the Q is great, right? but yeah. let me check. No, come on! Don't do that. Don't tell no. them that purge. <laughs> so yeah, if you use dissimulate, um, it doesn't. It, or arcane curse will stay on you. Increase. The oh okay. thank God. Oh. So, but yeah, but yeah, the third skill. Once you use a dissimulate, it, your your last word is is null and void. Okay, refresher dude's, orbit he's, is. He's broken, dude. He's he's really good. I, I typically, I mean, he's not as bad as Monkey King was, and it definitely took a little bit of time for people to get used to him yet. But his win rate is like third highest in divine and above games. Hmm. So oh, wow. he's busted. Third highest, fifty five point eight approximately. Okay, um, well, nerf incoming. On Friday, November first, he had fifty nine percent win rate. Oh, that's like an insane win rate. But he's dead. We're much actually. That's the the that data point is November eighth actually. So the, the in-game trends are not super up-to-date. But oh. he is in uh, 35 to 40% of all games right now. He is banned 40% of games. Yeah, he is, uh, he's an issue. He's the most banned hero right now. Okay. All right. He's dead. Ice Frog he's, will take he's still him. still too good. He just had, he had too much damage. When I read him the first day, it was like, oh, 270 damage from your first skill when it's maxed out. Oh, uh, 380 damage from your second skill when it's maxed out. Oh, uh, 200 damage, 220 damage it used to be. I'm sorry, it used to be 250 damage from your third skill, and there was a 150 talent at 15. So basically, he did 270 damage plus uh, 380 plus 400. Those is three basic skills. So if you just <laughs> cast all three, you do like 1,200 magic damage to a guy. That's even without your ultimate. That, he, his, his burst damage was fucking insane, and it's yeah. still very, very good. And it's hard to die in the hero, too, if you're good. Yeah, It's difficult to disable him enough. So, yeah, he's he's still just too strong he can't like out he can't hard carry somebody but his ability to like blow up supports in like a second without them being able to react is really easy yeah. if you mm -hmm. stay a little bit ahead like i do not see void spirits at feed almost ever almost ever yeah they're just yeah, always ahead that is true they always have a lot of kills i i win games against them but they always are like 15 and 6 or some yes, shit it's very so, consistent yeah until huh. i start playing him then i'll start feeding but still hell yeah <laughs> His little taunt is weird. I actually I haven't played him, but he's been in most of the games that I've played on the patch, and it's I didn't realize how much of a skill shot that was. And I, I oh, went the first skill or whatever, whichever one taunts you, the thing that drops the statue, and then if you're in the little gaze path, oh, it kind of pulls yeah, you back. That's what you mean by taunt. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's sort yeah. of like Lich's uh, sinister gaze in mm -hmm. some ways. That's a very weird spell. When you land it, it feels broken as hell. But I guess it's a little bit harder to angle than it yep. seems when you're a victim of it. Yeah, the, buying Yules is very common with the hero because you can Yule somebody and then do a guaranteed setup. Ah, okay. For well, example. stop talking, Purge. Well, you're making you it worse. People don't know how to play that. You're He's making it worse. of all games. <laughs> I have. There's no way I could even influence that to increase by like two percent. Everybody knows. He's in literally every game. His his pick percent would be fifty if he was never banned. Like Purge. No one thought to Yule least. someone up then put the taunt down. Okay, you're you're. These no, are too me. high Cap level. You're literally did us. it the first day. In pubs I mean, that I played with him. Don't People do this, have figured dude. it out. <sighs> and then you're going to you... cast last word on him and silence him, and then he's going to be like, Yules. I and know. then everything you did is gone. Don't worry. I I'm building Nullifier now. My No boots. It's straight no Yules. Or... Well, <laughs> it's yeah. just Nullifier. Until you get spider legs and all of an ocean heart. Spider legs! <laughs> spider legs, ocean heart, Nullifier. <laughs> yeah. It's literally off my game. I think one it spider legs, ocean heart, and eggs <laughs> on every single hero. No poop. Dude, you know why else you're getting ocean heart a lot? It's because you don't jungle very often. So you people are only giving you their trash items that they don't want. So that's why you <laughs> always end up with ocean heart. Because you're never oh, giving no! that's why. If you're playing core, dude, you get the pick of the litter. You drop like two items, and you throw you throw your trash to your supports. No. Did either of you find gentlemen get to try the Agonims Magnus before it was nerfed? Because no, that shit it, was it was busted. Some of the most fun I have ever had in Dota. Period. Four second skewer, no mana cost. You get a blink dagger too, and you get like a halberd, dude. You've got three k HP. They can't grab you. You're just zipping all over the place. It was, it was something. You could farm really fast too. It was like playing anti mage with a battle fury, but all you needed was like, yeah, your four thousand ags item. Because you could just skewer from camp to camp and kill them in like three shots with Empower. It was insane how yep. fast you could farm. I only played it one time, so I didn't min-max it. 
But if I'd played it a second time, I'm sure my GPM would have jumped by like 200 or something. Yeah. And he's he's stupidly tanky. It's it's he is, yeah. Magnus is I mean, a really good mid lane just bully. It's probably yeah. still decent, but empowering allies is just pretty garbage right now. So yeah, the damage bonus. I is think not, not enough teams in the NA qualifiers for the major abused the Magnus. We saw like one team do it, and then then a couple teams banned it, and the next day it was like everyone just forgot that Magnus was super busted, and he mm. barely got touched huh. for the rest of the qualifier. It was. It was strange, and I felt vindicated, kind of flaming it a few days later. And they're like, "Okay, it's been nerfed," and then all the credit went to Europe. Thanks a lot, Europe. Typical. Thanks, Europe. Always getting well, all the attention. We're, we're, we're taking another slot at TI, yeah. just because you guys were so rude. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I think that the patch is certainly evening out now. Uh, a few, another nerf on Void Spirit, but no one to me is standing out. It's too broken right now. Love the Lycan eggs. Best uh, ags change ever uh, from the old one, I have to say. I, got, I don't awful. even know what it is. It's a pack, homie! We, we need to turn somebody else into a lichen. Oh, right. The actual Slacks idea. I did hear about yeah. this. Yeah, the legitimate idea I came up with. The it. The Everyone literal... thought I was stupid. Guys, I emailed <laughs> icefrog at gmail.com with my ideas. <laughs> at aol.com, and he finally answered. Uh yeah oh tree and protector can we talk about that he's in every fucking game oh yeah, yeah. he's he's and he right annoys now. he annoys I mean dude. I was really sad when he came out because and they changed him because it like broke the hero's concept kind of and the first skill was just like really garbage um but then adding adding nature's guys tree walking at level one I think is a good change for the hero basically allows him to be playable again and then they added invis at ten but then all of a sudden it was like it was just too much all of a sudden they just nerfed leech seed at least. But he's probably still a little too good, I would assume. Yeah, I mean, and, and when the I, overgrowth ulti. He's just an annoying say. hero. He's just not fun to play against. Right? He that hits uh, hard. Slow he's down big. thing is yeah. horrible. I mean, I get why they 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 wanted to remove invis from all heroes at level one, so that they didn't just like sit and snipe couriers all early game, because that would be annoying. I think that's why they yeah made that otherwise people would have like imagine like if there was a couple like multiple invis heroes level one is and bounty just the only courier one? the first two days uh is he now the only if, hero that can be invis level one i think so there are not many yeah but if imagine if like the first day when the patch came out people would just literally snipe couriers Clanks. constantly with invis heroes yeah mm. that would be it would have been like awful so they removed all of them and now um and it's kind of back but wiener yeah. doesn't count as invisible come on yeah, guys that's true that's Still, it's a good Come side on. answer. It's a good thought. Come on, Pop Tart, yeah. shut up. <laughs> That's uh, Pop Tart. But... I was trying to prove something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I, I. I agree with you, Zayori. I mean, Tree and I still win games, but it's just literally fucking annoying. It is just getting caught in those goddamn brambles makes me feel so stupid about myself. <laughs> so I hate it. The vine uh, path. Yeah. Anyway, what's what's next in Dota? What's new? Well, uh, we got Singapore event, and then we've got uh, the Ukraine miner, Bukovel, I think is how you say Ooh. that. And then uh, Dream League is doing their major. I believe it's in Germany. Is it, is it Leipzig or something like that? Leipzig! Is that how you say Correct. it? I actually don't know. So, Which yeah, we got, some, we got some Dota coming up. We're in that quiet period right now. It goes like from qualifier chaos to silence. And then back into major action. Mm -hmm. It's like our, our, we're very, uh, we oscillate now in this current DPC from quiet to extreme. I think that's good. I mean, it, it hypes up the events more. I remember that burnout year that we had where there was an event every two weeks. I Even I didn't give a shit about Dota and I was at the events. So <laughs> it, was, uh, it was tough. I like the hype that we could build now, which is cool. And uh, I don't know. I think pro teams have it easier now, uh, so they won't stop complaining, but they, uh, you know. What do you mean they now... have it easier? Huh? I mean, what they do don't you... have to go to an event every week and be in flight. Oh, yeah. like Aren't people flaming the qualifiers, though, for being too like intense that. now? Where if It was like that last year, too. Wasn't it? Because now, mm -hmm. yeah, so you if you don't qualify through the major qualifiers, you just automatically get seeded into the minor qualifiers. You play this gauntlet to go to the major, you don't make it. You play another admittedly smaller gauntlet, right after like literally the next day and then if you don't make that cut you're just you're on holiday until the next cycle starts mm -hmm. well enjoy your holiday practice play your pubs <laughs> yeah. what do you want oh, yeah. I, I like the system i think that it's good because it's like if you're good if you can make it then you're gonna make it and if not you got a big ass chunk to get better 
So to me, it makes a lot of sense. I like it. I think the the one aspect that is not working well was basically what happened in this major qualifier was that if teams do take a break after TI, and this has been a trend for two years now, that teams will finish TI and take a and skip the first major. That when they start to play the the season two major, that there are only so many qualifier spots to get into the major qualifiers because I think it like carries who was in the last one yes, over. Something. So then when you have Secret and OG and Nigma taking a break and trying to jump in, only some of them were going to get in. Yeah, um, and, and in this that's case, the OG. Risk. And in this case, OG took another break, took a two major break, right? But if they all tried to get in that second major, it would have been like, okay, some really good team isn't going to get in, and then they're going to have to sit around again for a month and a half. I mean, it's kind of their fault, of course, because they don't want to play, but it, it seems very clear that the incentives for the top teams of getting right back into the DPC system right away is not aligning um, for for how it's designed. Right, but. and I, I think the problem with that is that it was a surprise, right? Because nobody knew that the new major system was going to have that before they already decided to have a vacay from the first couple majors, right? I, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe maybe they didn't know. But at the same time, it seemed to come out of nowhere, the DPC changes, so I'm sure that, that was a bit of a shocker. I, I'd be surprised if at TI there's not going to be big breaks for the big teams. I look at, like, IG, right? They just won the, the minor. There was like nobody else there. Everyone's like taking a break, chilling out. They just swoop in, get the minor, and that's great DPC points. It's amazing. And they did well at the major too. Did they get yeah. like fourth place or something? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't Hell say yeah. Like... So they're like probably going to TI just because they went to the first two events. I would say. Yeah, maybe. And played well. What yeah. um what did you guys think about OG seed? Right? I think in theory oh, it's cool. Like I like the idea cool. of OG not just taking time off, but doing it to do other stuff for their organization. Like now aren't they, they have a CSGO team now, or at least they're mm -hmm. expanding into CSGO. They're kind of following the team secret path, it feels like. We're going to use our Dota success to spiral out into all these other uh, games. And I, I love the idea of pro players taking other pro, pro players with less credentials under their wing. Is it going to yeah. work though? I, I think it's awesome because this is like probably, in the, the way that OG is doing, I think is almost never going to happen again in Dota. Because if you... It, what happens at the top level of pro scene, basically, is that they do not tell you their views, their perfect exact views on the game. It sounds simple when they do explain some of them to you, but they do not want to talk about them. They don't want to talk about them in interviews. They don't want to talk about them um, in their pubs. They don't want to talk about them like ever publicly because they know that the other pro players are going to hear that and it's going to help them get better. Mm -hmm. So then you take a team like OG who wins two TIs in a row, something that's probably never going to be accomplished again, at least for like five or ten years. And now they're like, okay, we've basically accomplished anything we could ever accomplish. Let's finally tell other people our ideas. So then they, mm -hmm. they take their all of their shitloads of cash that they have, and they're like, let's form a team of very good players that haven't quite made it or got the, 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 the wins that they deserve, and we're going to tell them our fucking secrets. And they're basically trying to fucking trifecta it. They're trying to say, let's polish these beautiful players that aren't quite flowers and see if they can do extremely well. So they're they're spreading the wealth and making it more viable for pros to be successful. They're telling them their views on the game and why they're good, which is going to possibly make them really, really good. And they're just basically doing like rich people shit. They're like, I'm rich as fuck. Let's just make an esports team. So it's just cool <laughs> to see them like literally just like mad scientist it basically. Like saying we have so much money and clout that we're just going to do what makes us happy. So it's just, it's fun to like, live vicariously watching them do that in my opinion. but i'm definitely like i'm definitely excited to see how seed does because they are good yeah. players I, i'm excited to see like yeah. z freak finally get like an amazing team and do really well like i know they they, they didn't make the qualifier or whatever but like, so they got third uh, in the opens that, and that goes back to your point of all these big teams playing through the opens they lost to nigma 2-0 in the quarterfinals and that was nigma wow. qualifying and then at the lower portion of the bracket it was team secret versus the chicken fighters and of course, Secret did make their way into the closed qualifiers. Chicken uh -huh. Fighters lost? Yes. No. It's Milan's team and Seneco, no. actually. Okay. So it's actually a decent It's place. a decent little but, squad, but yeah. yeah, more of a stack. Uh, I am so happy for OG Seed. OG fucking terrifies me um, because they are literally going to kill the scene if they continue to win. Last year, they didn't do anything. They like took half the season out 
They fucking roll in the TI, they bust everybody's nuts, and then they leave again. What does that mean for the DPC, the Dota Pro circuit, where you work hard all year, and then fucking Thompson comes out of his cave with Anna, and he shit stomps you, and then he leaves again? <laughs> There's no competitive aspect. So well. please, OG, don't participate in the next TI. And if OG seed win it, at least the scene will still exist. But for the love of God, if OG comes back and wins three TIs, I the game is dead. I mean, There's no it, reason to play the game didn't, anymore. Didn't No Tell say, wasn't his announcement that he's coaching instead of playing or something like that? I fucking hope so. Because if they like, if the team has, if they go through open qualifiers like Veggie Esports, they're literally going to win TI three times in a row. Please don't do it. Possibly, yeah. I'm so scared. Just stay yeah. out. Just stay back. All right? We can't take another one. There's no point. Why would you play Dota? Literally, everyone plays Dota so they can win TI. If there's one team that literally doesn't have to play Dota all year, and then they just show up and win well, TI, look. don't fucking play this game. Right, it cuts both it's ways, scary. dude. Dynasties and, like, big team legacies are a big part of traditional sports. Like, there's a reason every or a lot of people love or hate the Patriots, and they're, like, one of the most valuable franchises in the NFL. Part of it is that dynasty effect. You know, yes, I, I but agree the with Patriots you, get sorta. paid a million dollars per player all year. Uh, they they make twenty million, no matter if they win Sucks. or not. There's look, the, <laughs> TI money is obviously way higher than it should be in comparison to the rest of the year. But like, the other players can make a living playing other tournaments. Not again. I this is like the first thing I've ever been like, oh, there's enough money in the scene for players that aren't winning TI, but. At least if OG doesn't go to majors the rest of the year, there's more money that going around at least. But Do you know I, how I, depressing it would be to shoot for second place at TI? All right, guys, well, if we work real hard all year, tough <laughs> maybe shit, we Only can get second. Only five players can win, plus coaches and managers. But Stay back, OG! <laughs> Thank yeah. you. I'm good. Huh. And who knows? Maybe they won't win because if No-Tail truly is coaching. Maybe, maybe No-Tail's sitting back and managing the brand and helping seed and going to be around to coach og when it comes but who knows maybe their new squad if they, if, if he is in a coaching capacity isn't going to do as well is sakshka going to play or is sakshka also secondary coach or something who knows what's going to happen yeah. yeah exciting stuff though good to see some of these dota teams ex expanding out i i've just recently becoming how aware of or how significant dota is siloed compared to a lot of other esports you know how many esports teams well, there are like g2 for example that have teams in like every esport except dota we're one of these weird esports that's yeah we're part of the esports bubble but we're really off on our own with a lot of orgs that are only dota and i talked to other brands they're like yeah we do esports we don't really know what the fuck's going on with dota we kind of just let you guys do your thing it's a uh, we're in a little bit of a bubble i don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing because when you're in the bubble you're there and other people want to break in and they don't know how and they look at us like, dude, you understand Dota. That's like the hardest esport to break into. But it also cuts the other way when you want to expand into other games. They're like, oh, you don't know anything about esports. You're just a Dota guy. You guys right, feel you that at all? Yeah, but I like being in a Dota bubble. Sure, we don't get nominated at the Games Awards and a fucking Fortnite player wins Best Player of the Year instead of a two-time TI champion. But... At the same time, Valve also didn't have to rig the game show by giving the producers $5 million. You know, <laughs> we, we actually have a good game. So I'm cool to be out of the bubble where fucking Fortnite is voted the best esports title of all time, but we actually have a good game. I, we are literally, <laughs> I'll stay in Wakanda with my high technology rather than try to pretend like I'm fucking cool. All right? I'm very happy with where we're at. Get the fuck out, normies. Go to scene in great shape. Okay, so you, you it, like it is, the bubble. It, it is financially untenable to sponsor Dota teams and players, though, because it's all about, it's all, so player-focused that, like, you could sponsor some lineup and they could disband in three months and say, like, oh, sorry, guys, we're out, and then you have to be the bad guy and enforce contracts on them, yeah. which, uh, you know, is going to make you look bad uh, publicly, so, um, which almost never happens, to my knowledge, in the Dota scene. Like, people just don't care about contracts, I guess, typically. Yeah. Or at least the, at least the, the ones that do jump ship, um, it doesn't happen people don't freak out that much i guess um, i just wonder what it means long term for the game you know more and more the questions i'm getting from people when i go to meet and greets and stuff is what do we do about dota getting old we don't have any young players yeah. coming in all the young esports fans enthusiasts are playing overwatch or fortnite or all these other trendy games and dota and even league of legends is having the same problem there's not many high schoolers getting into mobas but mm -hmm. we're the old dudes of esports now we're like up there with counter-strike yeah. but it, the counter-strike has the advantage of being easier to watch so more casual yeah. people can watch it and understand it and i think mobas still suffer from that 
if you're not in the universe, if you don't know what those characters are, what their spells do, it, you're just kind of watching particles fly around, and you don't really know who's winning what or why it's so exciting. I don't know. I, I just worried about. I worry about getting left behind. I guess uh, compared well, to other esports. Go ahead, Perch. There's. It's. It's not the new fresh thing anymore. So people are just naturally going to play the new games that come out that everyone's excited about. Apex Legends and blah blah blah. Um, that that are all fresh and new, and all their friends are playing. Um, we all know that Dota doesn't have very much advertising. League does. Uh, we do not. And at least my YouTube demographics are shifting older and older. Like I think my main demos are like 25 to 35 and or whatever and not definitely not the 18 to 24 or whatever yeah. that's uh, one of my smaller demos so yeah the, the we're, we're aging for sure and i think that's why less people are playing over time because as you get older you get more busy girlfriend job responsibilities things to do so you don't have as much time to play have kids um yep. so i think that's why dota is shrinking um a little bit over time but um i think it's just something we have to accept that uh i mean we could definitely complain say hey valve can you please make some cool videos once in a while to advertise the game that's fair but I, I don't think we're there's not going to be a magical solution where Dota becomes massive unless yeah. for some reason MOBAs be, stay stay like the game of the 2020s, which probably yeah. won't happen. And eventually VR is going to replace us all anyway. So like we shouldn't be hoping for some fucking miracle bullet I, that yeah. that makes it perfect. I felt so you know bad. What old I did people, a little, oh, oh, go, go ahead. ahead, go ahead, bud. You know what old people have? Disposable income. Saggy skin. <laughs> yes. Both disposable income, saggy skin, and they don't care about looking good anymore because they've given up all hope. So uh, I think we're fine. You know, 20, 30 do year olds playing Dota. Well, we'll be around for a few more years. They've got money. Yeah, you know, fucking True. 11 year old kids stealing grandma's credit card to go buy a Fortnite skin. I mean, that'll last for a little bit, but who so, cares? So have you been paying attention to the economy or of politics? What? Oh, no, United States. Okay. Well, no, are the 12 year olds paying the economy? My stocks are slaying it. There's not people that are our age are not as wealthy as our parents' generation. That's all. True. Well, have you ever However, heard the term wealth inequality is this the first time. But the I've don't you understand? E even if the, the all the money is at fifty, one day will be fifty, and the fifty year olds will be dead, and then we'll take their money. the The boom is coming when the boomers if die. Their kids and we get their the wills. If your parents have money, which is not always the case and consistent across all groups of people. Right. That theory so yes, was rich people will still be rich. Inheritance wasn't a thing and you died and your stuff just got spread back into society. That would be cool, but it stays that is in the how family. it works. <laughs> so like, so what I'm trying to say is not everybody's parents are wealthy. Some are poor or heavily in debt and therefore there's no Well, then where's all the money, payout. Purge? Who it, has well, all the money? The Waltons then? have it, if dude. If you followed politics at all, it is very clear that extremely rich people have the vast majority of earnings. Basically like well, everything gets more everything has gotten more rich. expensive. Okay, there you go. Or vote in, <laughs> or vote in policies that... Or yeah, get them interested them in Dota. Now, older person, lot of money, 1%. They're not going to play fucking League in Fortnite. Did you see at the Game Awards where, like, uh, oh J.J. Abrams had to come out and he's like, hey, guys, I'll be playing Fortnite on the 25th. Uh, come over and teabag my corpse, screaming 11-year-olds. If we can show these one percenters that Dota is a good game over League and other ones... We're in, we're set. How does that? That's point? who Valve should start advertising to. They need to make go in with Elon and get him on the Valve Index. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, that would be great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what Elon's hourly is, but I'm sure it'll be cost effective. We'll figure. I mean, he's he just made that stupid fucking truck. I think I think he's ready for new ideas. Okay. Uh, he's open to it. He's like Netflix right now. We're we're taking anything over there. Purge, so. you stoked for Half Life Three, by the way? You got your index set up. Uh, yeah. You ready to VR I it? I don't. I don't have an index. I have a Vive. I've. I haven't used my Vive in probably two years. I had a great time using it when I did, but I just. I don't quite have the space for it. I need like an extra room. I feel like that I can just. Yeah. I, I don't want to play if I don't have the space for some reason, and it's also more setup, right? I have to plug it into my computer. I have to set a third duplicated monitor output, so it's like there's like setup that makes it a little bit difficult to play. Yeah. And yeah, um, just double click so, the icon. I hear you. Yeah, I, I mean, it, so it's like a little bit of setup time. Um, I had really good times playing VR when I did, and I definitely will play Half Life, possibly stream it. But um, I'm a little bit worried about if I'll get motion sick because I have gotten motion sick in games before. Yeah. And if I can't stream it for like five hours and I have to stop every like 45 minutes, be like, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I feel like throwing up and I need to go sleep for two hours. That's going to be a bad time. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully that doesn't happen. I hope that is how but it I'm, is. I'm, I'm definitely excited, but I'm still a little. 
I'm still a little wary of. Uh, I just, how I mean, simple I think it, it it's cool. Uh, it's just so few people that are fans of the Valve universe are gonna get to even experience it because how many? What percentage of people that have Steam have VR? Like point two or some shit. I mean, it's yeah, but this is a flagship product. This is Halo for the Xbox. This is yep. the thing that's supposed yeah. to convince you to buy VR. And the market demographic is right where it is. There's no mistake that Valve's IP that's supposed to make you buy VR is Half Life because all the Half Life gamers that got pissed off at Episode Two was fucking ten years ago. They're now all thirty five thousand right. dollars, and they've been putting a thousand bucks in their bank account for Johnny's fucking college and they're like i hope my wife doesn't find out and they take that shit out and they spend it you ain't getting no 13 year olds buying fucking vr kids baby it's True. desperate midlife crisis 30 year olds right where we're at <laughs> so we got it it's all good well, that's an interesting it's a good point uh, that yeah. the ip is is from games from a long time ago therefore the people that care about i mean i'm gonna play it because it is a we'll say leading game studio uh creating a vr game whereas um most of the other ones I've played are good, but they're not like, oh shit, this is like a lot of top tier talent went into it with a lot of money to make this game good. So I'm excited to see like, I'm excited to play a VR game that feels like a regular game, but it also happens to be VR and therefore will be pushing the limits of it. That's, Yo, that's what I'm excited for. And that's why I want to play. Sayori, okay. you well, want to know how VR happens? How? It's when a 13 year old kid is sitting at home and his dad goes into his private office and he's playing VR and the kid's like, hey, hey, dad, what are you doing in there? And he's like, shut up. I'm playing my, my games. And he's like, can I play? No. And then go back to your fucking Xbox. That's how VR is sold. The Zoomers getting jelly of the boomers. That's how we do it, baby. It's like smoking okay. cigarettes. You watch the fucking old people do it, and you're like, that looks cool. Dad's in his it room jerking off the VR is, port, and the bro, kid's like, what's going on in there? You know it is not fun to watch other people play VR. <laughs> but you want to know what they're experiencing, you know? Yes. The experience, <laughs> the way that they exhibit happiness while it's happening is impressive right, right. it cracks me watching just, people fumble around is bad the way you said it was so funny because we just had a family gathering and with us <laughs> some of the <laughs> family members and after eating all Don't we did was this. play vr Don't and watch this. each other play <laughs> I invited uh, Sayori to my Thanksgiving, and we had nothing to do, so I busted out the vibe, and it was just mom playing games, going, wow, and we're all sitting there watching her. We didn't have a feed monitor. <laughs> but eventually, eventually, that novelty is going to go away, and it's not going to be fun, I feel like. Yeah. I mean, sure. But uh, I think, uh, I don't know. I will say, though, if Half-Life Half -Life Alex fails, <laughs> I think we're all fucked. <laughs> I think Val's in trouble, dude. I mean, they they, they really want half uh, They want VR to work, and if they that's supposed to, to be the flagship VR win, that will get everything ro rolling in that direction. If that doesn't happen, ooh, well, nobody buying a VR kit to play Bone Works. Okay, they're buying it for Half Life. I mean, look, we we all know that VR eventually, when the tech advances enough, it's going to be the only way to game, right? Like. Everybody eventually. can recognize that. Like yes. Ready Player One yeah. is a perfect example. It's like eventually MMOs on VR or augmented reality is all anybody's going to want to do gaming wise. So right. like even if it doesn't work for now, it will eventually. It's just the price point has to come down. It has to be more accessible, all of those things. So like even if it doesn't work, I, I have a feeling that everybody that plays it is still going to enjoy it at least some of the time. I, I genuinely worry about the locomotion and the motion sickness thing that could prevent people from wanting like if i want to enjoy a game but it makes me feel like i'm going to throw up i'm just not going to play it and that could be a detraction obviously yep. even though i'd rather like fiend that shit 10 hours a day or whatever um so i like there there could be some straight up negatives um other than the other stuff i talked about setup time not having enough space and then the obvious of like expensive s hardware the space think, is uh, a the big, big deal yeah that space one's not easy to deal. fix either I think that uh, uh, attitude's a big deal, too. Uh, vi video games are a relaxing thing that you do after work, like watching a movie. And uh, it's very hard to motivate yourself after a long day. You get home, and you're like, I guess I'm going to fucking sweat my ass off playing Beat Saber. Here we go. <laughs> like, you know, that's yeah. what makes gaming fun. You're just sitting there with your thumbs and hands. So I think that's working against it, too. It does but. not inconvenience you, yeah. Yeah, no, that, yeah. that's true. I mean, you, yeah. if you remember, I don't know which of if either of you were involved, but do you guys remember like three years ago when we cast that Computex event remotely where Jack was there and he was like stage hosting it and we had a remote stream overnight. It was in Taiwan. There was a 100K Dota tournament. And at the end of it, 
there was a VR shooter game, and they had a tournament to try to debut how awesome competitive gaming could be for VR. And it was really rough. It, like just watching it, you could tell that the skill shots were like, you know, you're sort of like dodging these bullets. And at the end, they interviewed the guy, and it was like this 40 year old dude that won, and he was drenched. I mean, he was like dripping <laughs> sweat. He was out oh. of breath. He was just like, oh, yeah, I just, I, I, I practice as much as I can, you know? And I just, and, like, Jack's interviewing him, kind of just like, what do I do with this? What, what it's like what a legit this? athlete who's sweating his yeah. off. Yeah. So, but it, so it was like, true. Like, especially when it's competitive, you know, there was like a little prize pool or whatever it's it, yeah you're i think you're you're dead on the money slacks it's not relaxing the same way like dota can be if you're just kicking however down on Sunday. this is how we fix america's obesity yes, epidemic that's exactly every what single public school for recess has a fucking vibe in it 30 vibes and you go in the room and everyone and the kids are shooting each other and shit well, and they're I mean, just sweating they're just sweating they, they I, I i walked my dog by by a, a middle school today or it was like a grade school those kids were so uh, fucking how often loud. do you do that bro uh, you walk in your like dog the, by the middle school well there's a there's a public park right next to it so yes Anyways, oh, um, very interesting those kids are part. screaming and fucking running around <laughs> sporadically like they're you don't need a vibe to do that but what it solves will be it could solve <laughs> obesity problems and lazy people like us or yes. older Americans, because if I'm if I'm playing, even if I if I'm playing a sport, I have a really good time and I try hard and I will definitely burn energy. But I don't want to like get up and go do something like literally just exercising for the sake of exercise, and that's not fun. If it's a game, I will have a good time. So like if if I can use a VR system to game while also being healthy, it would work really good for me personally. And I'm sure there's a lot right. of other gamers like me that it would also help that way. Dude, we could do this whole Jared thing where we get you super fat and then you say like, I bought an index and I lost 400 pounds. And then like, oh, think about or it. Or you could just do that. Well, you have to do the first You step. need a manager. <laughs> and I'm not, I don't feel like, I mean, you know what you're capable of. <laughs> Trust me. I am desperately trying to find this VR <laughs> esports thing now. I'm curious if I can pull it up and I'm struggling pretty hard. I mean, it'll be it'll be really. Cool. I know that there are like buildings and stuff. People have like warehouses with some like VR setups, and they'll play like games there where they'll do stuff like this, like shooter games where there's actually enough space to play VR. I've never tried one. I've seen advertisements a little bit about it, but I like I don't know. I'm really excited for VR in the future of gaming for sure. And Me too. Uh, yeah, this will be the first what it feels like the first real sanctioned game studio attempt at it at, at making like a, a true AAA title. Even if it's yeah. not multiplayer, hope it works. Yeah, hope I hope they fix Dota VR, by the way, which worked for literally a month and then it, it was broken indefinitely. Does when will that come it? back? Does anyone use it? No, because it's been broken for three years. It's not. It's, just, it's awful. Come on, boys. Anyway. All right. What well, else we got, boys? Uh, I don't know. We're uh, we're getting close to the danger zone here. An hour and forty five minutes. If one of you guys want to pop off, uh, oh, this this would no, be I'm the good. time. I'm good. Pop off. <laughs> what He's the talking about what Trent did. Remember what Trent did? At hour forty. Oh, I get it. Yeah. I hate. Um, I don't know. Yaps or ocean I don't fuck <laughs> <laughs> You hate ocean heart, dude. Ocean heart. <laughs> Everyone that likes ocean art is stupid. The lowest of the low. <laughs> I really, oh my God. Uh, one day, I really just want to call out somebody and just make a, a huge lie about someone really, really sweet. Like imagine one day I'm just like, I was at an Eastward event. I was walking by Fada and he slapped my girlfriend's ass. Like, I mean, wouldn't that just be, what would he say to that? Yes. You know? Let's like, tarnish someone's career yourself? with uh, allegations of sexual. <laughs> yes. But why assault. would I say that? That's what I'm interested in. <laughs> exactly. That's like it's a situation where he has no reason to lie about that. So it must be true, but it wasn't true. It's such an interesting conundrum. <laughs> Think yes. about. It. We could spend hours dissecting, but why would Slacks do that and still end up nowhere? <laughs> exactly where we started. Wonder how many times that's happened in history or someone just made Cheap, something up and they're and they're like he had no reason to do that why would he do that it must be true like imagine purge if merlini had a tweet and he said you know purge is actually a fucking crazy 
Uh, I'm not going to say anything fucked up here, but just imagine if like Merlini of all people tweeted today, Purge kissed my mom on the lips and slapped her face and then ran out of my house. What would you do? I don't know, man. <laughs> I really enjoy this topic of conversation, though. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the let's go to story time, man. We'll wrap this All thing. Right. Um, <laughs> shit. <story time. laughs> well, lady, if you're listening, hit that tweet out, dude. Let's find out what happens. <laughs> let's do. It. <laughs> Please don't do that, Merlini. Great no social experiment. Man, I'm trying to think if I have any good stories from New Zealand, but uh, not too much fucked up shit happened. It was a fairly Aww. normal vacation. Uh, a lot Aww. of a lot of nerds at Exile Con. A lot of Dota fans. Everybody was pretty polite. We did a Dota meetup. I felt bad because everyone asked me, Zayori, please, how do how do we save Dota in Australia and New Zealand? <laughs> just like ah, I don't know, fellas. What what do we do? Uh, I was just like, I don't know if running a tournament here is going to do much. I'm like, no, nah, I don't think so either. Every idea I had, they're like, no, nah, that's not going to do it. It sounds like that region is in trouble. Apparently, there was a period where you couldn't even queue on Australian servers when I was there. Like, the servers were just legitimately, yeah. sorry, server not found. We don't really know what's going on. Yeah, so they have to play Singapore, I think. Yep, I think so. Um, yeah, that was the most fucked up own... story I heard in New Zealand. That's as far as it went. They should make their own Dota in their own server and have it get popular, then maybe Valve will buy them and then integrate them into Dota. I, That's the only way. They did tell That's me it. that the, the state of pubs on the Australian servers is so bad <laughs> that if you're, you know, let's say above 5K MMR or something, if you're in that top threshold, you actually cannot find a game outside of prime hours of like 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. or something like that. And the only reason games happen is because all of the players in that bracket know each other and they're all on each other's friends list. So when one or two of them sign on, it starts this chain reaction of, oh, are we playing? Oh, all right, I'll call me friend. And they, they all get online at the same time and then it just ends. So you have this four-hour window of actually amazing in-houses that are MMR games where people are trying and friendly and it's really cool, but you can only do it for three to four hours a day when you phone chain all of your friends. I can't tell if that's a nightmare or an awesome reality for Dota pubs. Because it is it's, sort of cool in a way. Good and bad, yeah. Like, I, I kind of missed that aspect of playing pubs with uh, in-houses with friends. Um, yeah. But it's a... It's a it, that those those things happen when matchmaking doesn't work. It used to happen in Warcraft 3 Dota a lot. Um, it, it doesn't happen as much now because it's very easy just to press play Dota, find match, and get a game where you can play Dota. So it's, uh, it's just a re reality of them being separated from the world more or less and having poor internet and bad servers so yeah i think Sucks. it's their fault i'm sure mm. that they had calls and they're like gabe's like hey australia just wanted to check in and see if everything was okay and they're like oh i might well from the you right and they're fucking the guy the server okay everything sounds wonderful <laughs> and uh continue enjoying dota I, they ha they call them every week they don't know what they're talking about down there <laughs> that sounds that sounds valid yeah i'm sure that's <laughs> sorry i don't speak australian so i'm not sure what just happened there but the sure. australian community is having a wonderful time <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i love australia and i love i went to convictus for free their big yeah. tournament i yeah. loved it i hope that it works out i do not know how to solve that issue and it's one of the things that valve fucking sucks at is retaining people around the world with issues. And that's because you need to hire people to deal with that. And that, you know, it takes effort to maintain communities and it's fucking hard. And that's why companies like Blizzard have yeah. 6,000 employees is because they know how to maintain their audience and make them actively act in their games and make them not feel like shit because of where they live around the world. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, I still need to make it to Australia, but... Highly recommend New Zealand. It's it's hard. I mean, it's a, they're fucking islands, dude. It's hard. They're pretty geographically isolated. It's it's tough. You're sort of on your own your own little vibe out there. It's hard to integrate with the rest of us. Wow, that's a little offensive. Well, I mean, from a technological <laughs> standpoint, from a know. technological. I did at ExileCon. Right, Anytime done. they talked about dates, they'd be like, "Yeah, it's uh, coming out on the 14th," but really, that's uh, the 13th for the rest of the world because we're right up against that time barrier there. Like. Anytime they say a date, they have to disclose whether it's, you know, in the New Zealand bubble or if it's a date that the, the rest of the world will understand. That's, mm. that's rough, dude. Try doing PR down there.
I mean, you know what's so funny is that our most iconic people, gods, Toby, um, Anna, are all from that region. That's so garbage. KP. And KP. KP, yeah. I mean, that's like some of the biggest names that we have are from that gauntlet, and uh, same, and that you, region same doesn't get any help. With the UK. I mean, yeah, but UK gets a lot of appreciation. They're fine. They don't need help. Uh, no, I'm saying they don't have that many pro players, but they have an overrepresentation of talent. Such as it's not quite the same. I mean, Owen. Just, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Toby is half is technically British as well. He lives in what? London. That's true. Toby's he like has, an honorary uh, Brit. He has, he has a he has a British passport as well. He's got a double, I think. Come on, there's somebody that we're forgetting here that's British that we're not giving a shout out to. I mean, uh, Perian Flax, but I wouldn't consider that talent. I mean, he's that's Perian Flax. I mean, he's just oh, okay. <laughs> no, too good. Uh, there you go. Too good. Yep. That's you forget too good. He's Swedish. He's <laughs> he's an honorary Swede now, and Red Eye, of course, <laughs> Machine. Yeah. Yeah, Red Eye. Yeah, there's quite a Red few. Eye. He doesn't even belong to a nation. He goes. He's uh, always on you know events and stuff. He's I don't think prolific. he has a home. <laughs> he's like Kyle. He just sleeps on couches at hostels. <laughs> Anyway, are we telling a story or are we getting the fuck? Yeah, out you of got here? a story, Slacks? <laughs> you got a. No, gotta... I don't have a story. That was a question for you guys. Parge, we nope. haven't talked to you about your life in a long time. Any stories? How's Tango doing? She's sleeping right next to me. She okay. had an emergency poop in the middle of my stream yesterday. I'm very glad she didn't poop in my house. An emergency poop? Uh oh. Yeah, she was like, I need to go. It was like an hour after I had already pooped her. Emergency yesterday, but she held it. Two trooper. days ago, we visited Chelsea's parents, and Mr. Rue snuck away, and he ate all of a uh, Border Collie's food out of his entire bowl, and he mm. pooped four times. And yesterday morning, he looked at me, and he had this very sad face, and I said, what's wrong, Mr. Rue? And just the tiniest little ball of poo rolled out, and he looked down, and he said, and it, you could tell, he's just like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and it was just one little tiny whoop. I'm like, it's okay. And I gave like him a, a little pat. Pellet? Like a rabbit. Like you know that it like he he wasn't like curled up on the floor. It just like it just slid came. Out. It just was there. And he looked back and he looked at me and he's like, I'm sorry, father. I've eaten more than my body weight in poop and I didn't even try. And that was um yeah, it was concerning. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Oh, God. All the, right. the only short story I can think of is the one that I, I mentioned to you on the phone the other day, Slacks. The, it was it was a lot of fun going to Thanksgiving at your house, and I was excited oh. to hang out with the family, but I had to figure out what to do when I showed up, and they all introduced themselves like we had never met before. Now, Slacks and I have been <laughs> business partners for, what, four years, five years now? His mom has cooked Thanksgiving dinner at my house for Midas Mode 1. I've met both of his sisters multiple times at his wedding. His, so uh, what the, do you do? The wedding that I filmed. They're like, oh, you work with Jake? Wow. And your mom's just sitting there like, I'm not going to stop the flow of this. I know that I know who he is, but I'm just going to let it go. So I just sat there. I, I played along. I just inter I shook hands. I introduced myself to these people I've met three or four times and we had the same conversation we've already had three times. I, I, just, oh, I no. guess I wouldn't remember me either. I don't know. I, oh, man. And this whole time, I thought I was some big dick CEO. I make zero impression <laughs> on people. Oh. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You know, the, the Cantor clan, uh, we got some issues. We got some. Uh, it was fun. I had a great time, but I, uh, I'm glad I just role played along with it. It made the night a little bit more fun. I felt like I could be anyone that I wanted to be. You know, I could just make it up does. a personality. No, oh, what do you Hers, do? We played uh, Pass the Pig. Yes. You ever heard of Pass the Pig Purge? No. It's an incredible game. So you have these pigs, uh, like pig uh, plastic toys. And they're about like this big. And you sit around in a circle. And you throw two pigs like dice. And depending on how they land, if they're standing up or if they're sitting on their snout, uh, you get points. But if they land on their back, both of them, it clears everything. That's called a snout out. So uh, we got a game like this with cows before. Yeah, that's right. And if you take a shot, uh, you could reset your pigs. So it's a way for me and my family to get shit faced. So we all just throw the pigs on the ground. We're like, bad draw, bad draw. And we just get fucked up until we don't even recognize what the pigs you look drink, like anymore. You, ne you never drink anywhere else. You drink. Well, you I got to drink my dad pig. out of the table or he'll think I'm a pussy. And then we fight at the end. <laughs> okay. So you pig drink only. 
We only pig drink at Pass the Pig. So it's a real American the, tradition. Bring the pigs to an eSport after party, dude. Fuck, you want to play Pass the Pigs at the maybe. fucking TI? Maybe. I, I want to watch you play Pass the Pig. That game gets hot yeah. real quick. I did also have an what? awkward moment when I was leaving where I was like, thanks, guys, the alcohol was delicious. And I was just like, that wasn't the compliment that I meant to end this with. I meant to say you made some good cocktails, but your company was really the fun part. No, not, it wasn't the alcohol that I stayed for, no. Nice booze, assholes. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> The Zayori exit. I oh, love God. It. Yeah, I sure know how to party. Purge, any stories? You got anything for us? Or are we done here? Is this it? I don't I don't think so. I need to get going, actually. All right. It's been two hours. I got a, got errands. Yeah, I hear. I got to PoE to play, dude. The new PoE League is out. Ooh, this is a big one. 3.9. But the before you start PoE? playing, Path of Exile, before you start playing, uh. make sure to check out the Moonduck store and buy some of our t-shirts. Oh, okay. Store.moonduck.tv. There, there we go. We're desperate. The, the, we're bankrupt. Please buy. Please buy. Please. Shirt. It's so much Purge. merch. I don't know where to store. I'm using please. them for towels. Okay. Please. Mr. Rue is wrapped in them as a bedding. We yeah. had to sell his bed. Please help us. I swear to God. All right, I gotta go. Okay, it's all high quality shit. Uh, <sighs> you know where to find it. YouTube.com/slash MoonDuckTV. The bottle will be there. Audio on the website. Thanks for watching, folks. See you on the next What the Duck.